four, three, two, one, and we're live. <laughs> Hello all, welcome back to the Invictus stream. My name as always is Mr. Harlan Guthrie, and I am here with the one, the only, the lovely Ms. Joe Fallick. Why, hello. The incomparable Mr. Justin Thomas James. Good day. And ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are very pleased to bring you a game tonight called Robert Liston's 300% Mortality Rate. <laughs> what is this crazy, bizarre little game you might be asking yourselves? Well, you know what? You're going to have to find out tonight on the Invictus stream. Crazy, bizarre game that you're going to find out about. Welcome! If this is your first time watching the Invictus stream, this is the perfect time to join. Because everything great is happening tonight. <laughs> in the world. It's just co coalescing, is that the right word? Yes. It's coalescing in a great, beautiful way. Um, and uh, welcome. We do this every Wednesday at eight o'clock. We stream role-playing games with our friends, family, and you, the community, and uh, it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be a great time. Uh, if this is something you're watching through the YouTube, the YouTubes, make sure you like the video. If you're watching this on other platforms like Mixer and Twitch, good for you, I guess. I don't really know much about Mixer or Twitch, but they're supposed to be really, really good. So, you know, like it on that. I don't know how you like something on anything else. Weird flex, but okay. Weird flex. Um, also, if you're watching this on Periscope, you're the one. The one person that watches on Periscope, because no one else knows what Periscope is. Um, if you are watching this and you're not a part of the Facebook group, you're missing out on something really special. Go over to Facebook right now and join up for the Facebook group. It is the place where we get together during the week and hang out and chat and share stories and share RPG ideas. And uh, it's really, really uh, exciting. It's, it's I want to say a beautiful place. And I'm going to. It's a beautiful place where people get together and chat. And, uh, and you have a chance to win Most Valuable Post. Most Valuable Post this week, I want to give to... Someone cue up the drum roll sound effects. I'll do it. Oh, I, there it is. I got it. Mr. Jason Scher. <laughs> Why, you might ask? Well, Jason is the first official person from the Invictus stream to go to Chronicle Brewery so and buy himself a six pack. That doesn't mean that he's just winning because he bought something. It's more so that he got the chance to go there and, and possibly meet Johnny and Ted and these are amazing people. And I'm so happy that we work with them in, in some way. So Jason, you and Most Valuable Post, I hope you come out and hang with us next time we're doing a little Chronic Night. Different thing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the most valuable post. So when you're part of the Facebook group, you have a chance to win that. And winning that is everything because you get XP. And XP you can spend in-game, like tonight. How can we spend and it tonight? I just added it to the XP sheet. <laughs> Updated in real time. Real time. Uh, you might notice that Rob's not here tonight. We were originally going to be doing Apocalypse World. And if you're watching this expecting Apocalypse World, I apologize. It's not Apocalypse World. Rob is having some family issues. I, you know, I had a tough time struggling with this post because I wanted to make it seem enough to let you know why Rob's not here, not enough to make it feel intrusive, but also enough to make it not vague that, you know. So Rob is, here's what I'll say. I won't say, I'll just tell you this. If, if you see Rob, give him, you know, tell him everything's okay. And he's not here tonight. <laughs> this is that's the two sides of the coin, right? And if you're watching, Rob, we're thinking about you. Yeah, we are. Did you lock Louie out of the room? No, is Louie not in here? <laughs> he's outside. Do you want to let him in? Because yeah. I definitely locked Louie out of the room accidentally. <laughs> I didn't realize. Why was he downstairs? I don't know. Anyway, um, so that's right. Uh, Rob's not with us tonight. Apocalypse World will be starting up next week. I uh, apologize for the delay. But you get a chance to... Uh, to hang out for a long, long-awaited game. Uh, Robert Liston's 300% mortality rate has been a long time work in progress RPG on my U. Whoa, Joe, you came all the way from your side of the world to in here. Wow, that's amazing. Crazy how fast Powers of teleportation. Is. The powers of tortapination. Um, yeah, Lou was making a sandwich. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah, uh, Robert Liston's 300 percent mortality rate it's been a long time rpg that i wanted to do 
I have an ongoing folder of games uh, that I want to run one shot. So this was just an excellent list. So I hope we have fun tonight. Justin, you were away a little bit. Where were you? I was away. I was down in Maine. Mm-hmm. Um the horror capital of the United States. Yeah, I was down in Maine um, for a few reasons. There was a um, a uh, audiophile magazine uh, lobster bake, which uh, I attended, okay. and I ate three whole lobsters. You did East not. Lobsters. You ate three I, lobsters? Oh my god, save some lobsters for the rest of us. Lobsters. There was still like 100 lobsters left over. There was so much food, I and I lobster. just filled up. So I had enough lobster to um, keep me satisfied for the week, and now I'm already um, pretty much craving it. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I met up with some other narrators while I was down there and tried out some new board games with my mm-hmm. good friend Andrea Parsonow, who introduced me to um, Pandemic Cthulhu Edition wow. and also also uh, Swords and Mystic or Swords and uh, Swords and Strongholds which is a mouse guard themed game. It's kind of like chess, but um, I wanted to ask Joe, have you played mouse guard? I have not, but I've read through um, the the RPG text and it sounds so fun as someone who read through all of the red wall books, like 10 times each book when I was growing up, I, I have a very, I would really like to play mouse guard. <laughs> <laughs> and I know how to read too. Why don't you run mouse guard for us? <laughs> Next one shot, I'm thinking. I will. You know what? I'm thinking when we come back into episode two of Apocalypse World, there's just going to be, it's just going to be mouse guard mice. instead. Yeah. I think it fits. It's mice that fuck and die in the apocalypse. That's, uh, well, that, I mean, that they no different than in real life, right? Right. <laughs> I, I, I was having some, uh, Poor some, mice. um, I was having some microphone and speaker difficulties, and I came back in at mice are fucking. fucking in the apocalypse. Um, she's gonna run. What, she's what gonna run my, mouse world. Uh, mouse guard, but mouse, world. mouse guard apocalypse. Oh, sick! Yeah, mouse guard apocalypse. Biker mice from Mars. Ooh, now there's That's an true. RPG. That's an old TV show. Um, I was gonna oh. also mention something important coming up, which was Gen Con. Gen Con. That's right. Next Jenkins. weekend, Justin, Joe, and myself are driving the eight hours to oh Indianapolis. God. And if for those of you who are like, uh, get out of the way, I don't want to go so far <laughs> to Indianapolis. Uh, we're driving. We're driving a nine hours. Yeah, it's gonna be like nine, yeah. maybe even ten, maybe even twelve, maybe thirty hours. Thirty I hope not. hours. We're, we're gonna stop gonna miss it. <laughs> every hour for three hours or for two hours. <laughs> We are doing the... I'm tired of driving. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We're And we're meeting up with a few fans, Jason, Raven, and they're each bringing a friend. They're definitely coming. But they're definitely, definitely four people. And uh, Rob obviously will be there. And there was some maybes. Uh, oh, Adam Ali. And there was some maybes. So if you're a maybe, you know, become a yes. Be That's a right. yes man or woman. Yes person. Um, yeah, we'd like to see you. No pressure. I had someone message me being like, hey, I'd really like to come. I can't get off work, but they're like, can I meet you up in like the halls on Thursday? Unfortunately, we're not going to be there till Friday, so I can't see you. But if it's something like that, if you can only come out for the day, let us know because we can swing it around the schedule. You know, if you just want a high five mm-hmm. or a behind Bye. hug. I already had one of those. Ooh. That sounds... Sexual. A yeah, but Drupal hug. definitely ran up, just random yeah. dude, and like grabbed you from gave behind. Me and behind gave me a behind hug. Giant. Hug me from behind. But not really that way, but maybe that way. Mm-hmm. We'll find out. Anyway, um, so Gen Con, that's the that's the that's the ticket. Make sure you come on, boy, and uh, have some fun. Also, if this hasn't been clearly stated, you don't have to go to Gen Con to stop by the Saturday night. It's Indeed. not at Gen Con. No, it is at a pub about a 10-minute walk from the Indianapolis Convention Center. The details are on our Facebook page. I don't remember the venue's name, but it's like a, it's like 
weird sports bar. <laughs> yeah. And we're all just going to hang out and have some chicken wings and yeah. some nachos and some beers. Chicken wings. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, because a few people, I, I think I was getting the vibe. They're like, oh, I would go, but it's expensive to like buy. I was like, you don't. That's why we're doing the social event is so that you can just come by and be like, hey, what's up? I like you. Give us like flowers. Or the opposite. Hey, I hate you. And then we give you flowers. We give you flowers <laughs> to make you change your mind. <laughs> we'll come with flowers, I guess. <laughs> Please change your mind. Um, but yeah, you know, for, for the people who make the trek out, maybe we're going to have something special for you. So. Mm. Like a sticker won't be anything special. Won't be that's anything. special. Don't a business card. A business. Here card. you go. You're a business casual. Business. A business handshake. <laughs> business casual. I brought hug. this just for you. Wow. Um. Yeah. Gen Con. That's the big news. Is there any other big news? Um. We're not doing a chronicle night yet. Chris hasn't had his baby yet. Hmm. God, I'm so excited to meet her. Me too. Yeah. Baby Boopie. number two. Yeah. Baby. Harlan and I were at the farm last weekend and we got to do some farm harvesting and it was the best. We've still, we were just finishing off the last of the veggies that they sent us home with. Such amazing veggies. The bountiful crop. Such a bountiful crop of veggies. All right. Well, there's no sense in drawing this out anymore i think we're ready to start the game let's get it over with oh the rpg oh i don't have a, d a coin you promised me a coin i didn't promise you shite but you can use my coin that's my special today's stream i will be using a 50 cent piece a canadian 50 cent piece oh, oh. have a this oh. one it's fancy yeah that is a fancy one nice i like it all right, we are using the Invictus system. So if you want, you can follow along at home. I'm dropping a copy of it in the Discord chat right now. Print it off, make yourself a character. I don't know, do whatever you want. I'm not your dad, or am I? Son, come home. Ladies and gentlemen, without further whatever the fuck, this is typing on a keyboard. Loud typing on a keyboard. <laughs> this is Robert Liston's 300% mortality rate. Beneath the cloud-covered skies of Edinburgh sits the hospital, St. Francis. It is, of course, a teaching hospital, one rife with young students, excited, eager to move about the halls and follow the professors from room to room. The observatories, the theatres, the surgical theatres are packed young students eagerly taking notes at each and every move. The two of you stand before the large doors, the sky outside about to break, bringing the first drops in the spring afternoon onto your heads. Luckily, you stand just beneath the overhang. Of course, the streets are quiet this early in the morning as you arrive for work. In this year, Nary a horse be out this early. The hospital waits for you to. You, Ursula, you enter first. What do you look like? Well, I'm a um, petite brunette. A cigarette. That's my want to do. Stressful on occasion, so. Calm oh, my jittery nerves. Uh, of my 
brown hair pinned in a tight bun and a clean, currently, nurse's outfit and patent leather shoes. I uh, look behind me and open the door. Uh, are you coming, Mr. Duncan? Mr. Duncan, oh. you enter right behind. What do, who are we looking at? Yes, yes, indeed. Thank you, Ursula. We're looking at Mr. Duncan, um, a very dapper, well-put-together man, uh, wearing a tweed suit, um, which goes with uh, the spring, of course, um, and a, uh, a bow tie. And uh, he's got one of those um, uh, mustaches, though, uh, when he shaves it off, he has quite a bit of a baby face, uh, as his, his friends all like to jibe at him at the taverns. Um, he is uh, about average height, um, pasty white skin from all of the time he's spent inside the past few years, uh, going over his uh, medical notes, but uh, he, he's, he's proud to uh, be working, finally. Um, and uh, there is a sense of pride on his face as he steps into the hospital behind Ursula, um, a pride that might have been instilled by his father, who very much wanted him to be a doctor. St. Francis the Hospital is run by one Rupert Grinterby. And normally this hospital is very calm at this time in the morning. The streets outside would reflect as such, you believe, except when you enter the lobby, you notice that it isn't a tizzy of excitement. People are moving about, people who don't seem to belong to the hospital of sorts. Some people walking around with large clipboards, some people walking around in groups, and of the Two of you share a perplexed look. You notice the hospital administrator himself walking towards you. Rupert Grinterby is a tall man with a powder white wig. He walks like his mouth is dropping down, but when he stands still, it's as if the energy returns to his face. He barely looks at you, Ursula, and locks eyes with you, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Good morning. It's about time you two arrived here. Ah, oh, yes, sorry, the uh, rain slowed us down quite a bit. You, you see, it's, it's raining cats and dogs out there. I, I hope say. not. Edinburgh, cats and dogs don't belong here. It rains far too often. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Uh, Grinterby. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, Ursula. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. Well, I need to speak to the two of you. Um, something's important about your tutor, Mr. Robert Linson. Uh, oh, will you meet me in my office, please? Um, I, I would love to, um, um, Sir um, uh, Grint Grintersby, um, but um, unfortunately I have to use the restroom. Um, um, uh, Ursula will fill me in later, yes? Uh, very well. Of course. Come. And he sort of turns without even checking if you're following and starts heading down the uh, marble hallway of the hospital. And as you're heading down the hospital, this is a hallway you've walked down hundreds of times. What does it look like? It's a beautiful place. Somewhere I always dreamed of working. So lucky. So many women my age don't even have a, a vocation. I'm among the first nurses uh, uh, to be trained here, and I think it's just, just fabulous. Uh, it's a little bit dingy, of course. Uh, there being only oil lanterns to light the uh, darker passageways of the hospital, but mm, you get used to it. Um, it the conservatory is beautiful. The big lead-lined windows. She trots to keep up with Mr. Grinterby. And Grinterby takes a tight turn down a hallway and spins on his heels to make sure you're following and almost bumps into you. Oh! Uh, you, you walk awfully quiet and awfully close, Miss Ursula. Then, now, now, before we enter my office, I, I wanted to um, remind you that uh, Robert Liston is a um, decorated and um, blah, 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 respected surgeon in this hospital. You, you do understand that, yes? Of course, yes. Uh, I've had the pleasure of making his acquaintance several times, and uh, he's... Uh lives up to the name. Well, of, course, of course. You, 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 well, I would say Mr. Duncan works directly for him. You, well, I guess you move in and out a little more, but ultimately his contact here with the hospital, Mr. Stephen Cumberland, well, he's having a right old time trying to get a hold on Mr. Liston. 
after this morning's uh, little uh, uh, kerfuffle, as we might call it. A kerfuffle? Yes. Uh, uh, it looks like Stephen's in my office. J- j- just wait here for a moment. Of and course. He enters the office and shuts the door, and you hear loud voices behind it. And as you do, there's sort of a group of young residents moving past, and you can't quite hear what they're saying, but they're sort of talking in a hushed whisper. Um, Ursula is not above a little bit of eavesdropping. She sidles up to the door and puts her ear against it. What do I hear? I mean, listen, Flip. Oh, listen, Flip. So we're using the Invictus game system. The Invictus game system uses a coin. So there's no listen skill. No, so it's either you do, you go, all the skills are listed there. Let me pull it up here. Fighting, doing, thinking, seeing, talking, helping. Yeah, so we can call this a seeing or you can call this a doing. Which would you like? I would like to do a seeing. Perfect. I have uh, that skill ticked off, which means I get to roll twice. You get to flip twice. And if you flip yes, you get to do it. Mm-hmm. I rolled a yes. Perfect. So yeah, you go up to the door and you listen. No, 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 just calm down, Stephen. You're overreacting. It. Listen, it was a tiny little, a tiny little what? It was a tiny little kerfuffle. Kerfuffle? The entire stake of the hospital's reputation lies on the shoulders of that madman, and you want me to go. And that's about as far as you can get. However, as you're leaning on the door, you see Mr. Duncan walk up behind you. Oh, Mr. Duncan. Yes, he's just inside. Oh, did did I miss anything important? Are are you eavesdropping, Ursula? No, 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 of course not. I just had an itchy ear. On my face. And you're I mean, scratching it on the side of the door. It, nothing itches an ear quite like a door. And as I, the two of you are standing there, you I hear the I name see. Dr. Liston in the group that's sort of huddling around the corner from you. Mr. Duncan, your ears sort of perk up, and, and normally at a hospital mm-hmm. like this, there's no sense of gossip or anything like that. There's usually a sense of pride and camaraderie. The idea of hiding behind closed doors to talk about something is preposterous. So this this sort of gossipy circle has caught your attention. Uh, and I, I walk over, crossing my arms, and and uh, who are these people talking? This looks like a group of young nurses, um, but they're nurses in training. They all sort of stop and, and sort of turn towards you. Oh, um, actually, give me, are you trying to sneak up or are you, you're going purposefully? No, not at all, not okay. at all. I'm trying to make myself um, known. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. It must be getting close to the end of your shift, yes? The shift change? Oh, y- yes, I'm so sorry. Um, we were just talking about Mr. Liston, Dr. Liston, and, and, and this morning's surgery. Ah. Well, anything that you are saying to each other, you can say in front of me. Go ahead. Out with it. Let's hear it. What oh. are you saying about Mr. Liston? And uh, you know Robert Liston to be sort of your mentor, protege, or no, you're his protege. He's your well, mentor. I highly look up to him. Yeah, you've yeah. been following him around for the past like two months, basically, while his Indeed. his sort of methods are a bit unorthodox. You respect I, him as a talented wild. surgeon. Indeed. Um, she sort of looks at you coyly. Why don't you give me a flip to try to convince her? Right, okay, so... Um... Yes, so I'm flipping. Um, so you could do fighting, doing, thinking, seeing, talking, helping, whichever works. I mean, talking. I'm, I'm going to do doing. Sure. And that is going to be because I am doing this action that I described. <laughs> uh, so no, I'd say you could do you could do talking or even helping. Like I'm going to help you I'm, do this, but doing is more physical. I think. Hmm. Unless you can convince me otherwise. Unless you want to like put her in a headlock. That's yes, physical is doing. Um oh, I don't know. I'm going to think about this. I'm going to think about the things that they've said. And okay. try to piece together um uh, Sure. Well, Give me a flip. Because yes. I already get the feeling that they're going to be like, oh no, sorry, Mr. Duncan, we'll get back to work. Perfect. So um and um, do I get to choose whether heads or tails? Like Yes, you pick your side. All right, my side is heads. Because of the queen, you see. 50 mm. cent piece. Because the queen gives good head. Oh, blast. Do you have it checked off? Tails. I do have it checked off. You get I to get flip to roll twice. again. Yep. 
Thinking. And remember, anytime you want to succeed at something, regardless of what the flip says, you can do that. Well, look at that. The beautiful queen herself. Beautiful. You I think know. on what they said and you and you you know enough about your mentor to know that he is sometimes a bit pushing the boundaries. And uh, while you don't like the idea of them gossiping the halls, you also sort of recognize that mm, maybe he did something that it warrants discussion. And as you think that, the door next to Ursula swings open wide and Rupert Grinterby is standing there. <coughs> Ursula, you could, oh, Mr. Duncan, you, you, I'm glad you're both here. Come in. Uh, yes, well, back to work, ladies. Uh, yes, sorry, sorry. And they walk around the hall. The two of you enter Rupert Grinterby's office. He's the hospital administrator. He's a large, beautiful, stately office with perfectly... Stately. Done. Perfectly what? Perfectly stately. stately. With, with wooden boards all, all around the room. Stately Panels. wooden boards. Yeah. And These a, are the and finest desk. wooden boards I've ever seen. The stately is finest. Wooden boards. Check out this wall pole here. It's oh. very regal indeed. This he is walks over state and says, of the I'm art. I'm proud of this wall pole. I took it from the Orient. And he walks over and there's like, it's bamboo. <laughs> and, the uh, says, Orient. And please, 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 please sit. And you see he's got this gorgeous couch. His office is dressed like a living room almost, which mm. probably was normal for the time. But whatever the case, you see a man in the corner, Stephen Cumberland, sitting on a high back chair looking awfully upset. <laughs> And uh, you recognize Stephen Cumberland as sort of being the main, not accountant so much, but he's he's sort of he's sort of the budgeter of the hospital, I suppose. And he's accountant? looking quite sweaty. Is everything all right, Mister Cumberland? I exchange a glance with uh, Ursula, and his sharp eyes look up. He's, no, it's not all right. Your mentor has gone off the loony pin this time. And he stands up and begins to walk over and Grinterby's like, hold up. Just relax, Mr. Cumberland. Please, have a seat. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, yes, two lumps, please. Oh, uh, all right. Only two? Um, what about you, Ursula? Uh, yes, please. Five lumps. Oh, that's my more like it. Seventeen lumps for me, Mr. Cumberland. And Cumberland sort of is like, Pow, and walks over to the tea and, you know. And he smiles at you with his, like, wooden teeth. Now, how can we say this? Robert Liston has had a surgery scheduled this morning. Now, as you know, he's quite um, adept at performing these amputations and surgeries with quite um, a bit of... Uh, Creativity, and, sir. Uh, good word, yes, yes, yes. Speed would also be a good one. In fact, uh, this morning he set a new hospital record, I, I believe a record for all surgeries, at two minutes and thirty seconds. <gasps> My goodness. What was the procedure? Wow. Yes, yes. Um, it was a leg amputation. Now, unfortunately, good. a small little, um, how can I say this, a little, sk um, a... And Cumberland speaks up and best. A mistake. It's a matter of perspective, Cumberland. A small little snafu has happened, in which um, Doctor Liston has cut off the um, patient's testicles. Oh, oh dear. Um, was it part of the procedure? Surely it had something to do with his vision of healing the patient, the Hippocratic. No, he cut off his testicles, uh, Cumberland says, like shaking with tea in a spoon. Cumberland, calm down. As far as listed is told us, no, it wasn't part of the surgery. And uh, I mean, awfully, I mean, the, the patient, I mean, is, is, is probably better for it. I, I would agree with you, Mr. Duncan. So, um, he's, he's done this. How, how is the... Um... Uh, who was it? Who he, he did this to? Was it just... No, 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 it doesn't matter, the dead. But the important thing oh. is that Robert Liston said, unfortunately, he was doing this in front of his students. He's trying to do a little bit of operations. And now we have a bit of a... What was that word you used? Mistake. Yes, a bit of a mistake on our hands. See, it turns out one of these okay. new students was um, one of the financiers of this hospital, and they're afraid that... Uh, Liston is no longer capable of performing these surgeries. 
That's absurd. Dr. Liston is uh, unparalleled in his skill, his expertise, uh, and his, his teaching finesse. Uh, uh, I should like to speak with this student. In good time. The student, unfortunately, is rather connected. It wouldn't do any good with that. But suffice to say that they've put me in charge of securing Liston's future here. And I've put it upon Mr. Cumberland here to survey Liston and ensure that he is fit for service. Cumberland turns around. But I'm not going to do it, you see? And he walks over and starts wagging a finger at uh, Grinterby. And I'm not going to be your little patsy anymore. <laughs> Liston is a hazard to this hospital. And I don't care how professional you think he is. He's caused more damage to this hospital than anything else. Uh, don't go, please. Um, uh, enjoy your tea, uh, Mr. Mr. Cumberland. I, 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 I do believe that, um, yes, uh, extraneous, extraneous circumstances um, are rather common in... Um, uh, I look at Ursula. This is a first. Have you spoken with Dr. Liston? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm too, too, um, friendly with him. Yes, yes. Ultimately, I can't put myself in this. The, the, the surveyors of this hospital wouldn't go for it. If they saw me and Liston arm in arm, they don't trust my opinion. And I'm not going to do it. Yes, yes, I know that. So, Cumberland and I decided to put it upon someone else. And that's where you two come in. You're saying that you would like us to uh, decide whether or not um, Mr. Liston, or Dr. Liston rather, is fit to continue being a doctor at this hospital, or in general, are we going to be taking away his medical license? No, 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 nothing like that. It's just hospital dependent, really. Um, well, Cumberland, and and for the first time, Grinterby oh, sort yeah. of takes his tea from Cumberland, and you can see this is sort of where his expertise in a way ends and where Cumberland's more forceful nature is necessary. Cumberland sort of steps forward and hands you both your tea, roughly. Your oh. spoon is sticking straight up, Ursula. Just, ah. Now listen, when it comes to it, the black and white of it is this. Liston needs to be cleared as a threat. If another one of these surgeries happens and he kills somebody, then we could lose funding. Both of you, for better or worse, like Liston. And thus you fulfill Grinterby's need for this person. But you also love this hospital. You both have the highest attendance record. You are both revered by all the people beneath you and around you. And you have a pretty good working relationship with Liston. You two are the people that, between the two of us, we have decided could be fair and just and even-tempered when deciding Liston's ultimate fate with this hospital. So, what say you? Well, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of all of this. Yes, yes, we will gladly look into it and, and have a well thought out response uh, by the end of the day. Uh, by the end of the day, is that... No, 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 listen to me now. Listen, after this morning's surgery, he's locked himself in his office and he needs... He is aware of this. Ultimately, right. he has right. to be yes, interviewed by people that he trusts as well. I see. Um, good. Well, then, um, let us not dally. No, no, no. Let let take a moment. Sip your quick. tea. Cumberland and I will, will oh. excuse ourselves. Just talk amongst yourselves, please. Uh, there's the file of today's mm -hmm. surgery is here, right in front of you. And the two of them sort of excuse themselves out into the hallway, leaving you in this stately room alone. Oh, <sighs> Goodness me. It what a disaster. Sort of misunderstanding. Perhaps the, 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 perhaps the patient did want their balls cut off because I could not imagine Mr. Liston, Dr. Liston rather, make a mistake. It, it's, it's always possible. I mean, Dr. Liston is c continually pushing the bounds of medicine with regards to... Indeed. Cutting things off specifically, I wonder if maybe he's 
perfecting some kind of new experimental procedure. Or, I'm not sure, but he, he rarely <laughs> shares with me his, his thought process behind all of this. Mm. Well, perhaps this is the time. Uh, the, the, the medical philosophies of um, what he... What his philosophy was, his hypotheses, if you will, uh, behind this procedure, perhaps are above what I myself naturally would do based on conventional um, um, wisdom. Perhaps he's discovered something, like you say. So and as the two of you sort of share these thoughts back and forth, you sort of casually open the folder and you're like, yeah. And you see like the photo, or not the photo, but like the, the autopsy report of the oh. dead patient. Oh, oh my. Oh, that is quite vulgar. Oh, I'm feeling faint. And on the last page of the document, Robert Liston's own hand is like, oops. <laughs> well. All right. Let me take a closer look at this. Do you mind, Ursula? Please, I, I, I just, I'll be seated over here. Um, yes, how's your tea, by the way? It's delightful. Absolutely yes, delightful. A bit of a kick from all that sugar. Five lumps. I've always been a five Damn. lump girl. Ah, yes. All right. Well, I'm going to think about all of the things that I'm reading here in this file. Perfect. Give me a flip. Remember, you can flip twice because you have think. I'm a thinker. Oh, no. That's a tails. I don't want this. And that's also a tails. Yeah, you don't pick I don't, up I can't. I can't make heads or tails from this. And as you do, you hear a knock on the door, and uh, Grinterby leans back in. Blah, blah. I hate to press you, but have you had time to consider? Uh, I should like to speak with Dr. Liston if he's available. Well, that Indeed. would be part Indeed, of it, of course. Yes. He in invites himself back in and shuts the door. Cumberland had other things to attend to. Now, l l listen. You must go to Dr. Liston's. He is aware that we are sending someone or some people to essentially interview him and, and make sure he's fit for continuing work in this hospital. So that's why we wanted to use friendly faces to him. He might be a bit um, resistant. as you He can be a bit eccentric. Ultimately, I want him to stay at this hospital, so please do anything you can, everything you can. But also, and he sort of hesitates for a second, we really can't have another issue. You must, must be sure that he is clear for active duty. That he is capable of performing these surgeries without any incident. All you right. want us to be objective about our investigation? As much as possible, but also be fair to him. Do everything we can to and keep him here. Your, your duties have been assigned to other people for the day. This is your only, only prerogative for today. Come back tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, and we'll have that meeting. And he walks to the door and opens it for you. No, no, no. I have a, a surgery scheduled for Liston tomorrow morning. I can cancel it at the last minute if, 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 if he doesn't get clear, but uh, my hope is that will do us proud. And he slaps you both on the back and leads you out, sort of pushes you almost. <laughs> and uh, shuts the door behind you. Tsh. And standing before you is like a small little page boy with like a like a poor boy cap, and he's like looking up at you. Good morning, Archie. Fuck you. And he skips off down the hall. And you know Liston's room is sort of down to the left around a tight corner, um, down sort of near the surgical observatory. Uh, I don't know if it'll be possible for us to give him a objective evaluation uh, don't you agree ursula I, I, well i suppose I feel... that you as a, the f physician in training mr duncan uh, with all due respect you have the most knowledge of the two of us about psychiatric evaluation whether you think he might be capable of performing the procedures that you yourself have studied and performed i believe your first one last week did you not I did, I did, and it was relatively cons successful. I'm, I'm a little nervous, though, that it would be like the student trying to trap the master, so to speak. Or to, why don't you it leave? Feels, it feels unethical. Of course. Why don't you leave the questioning to 
yourself, and I will make the judgment, as I'm less mm, tied up in Mr. Mm. Liston's, Dr. Liston's success or failure as a physician. How does that sound? Yes. Yes, Ursula. That, yes, that would be fine. I would. I would gladly do a an analysis on his um, um, psychological well being. Um, and you make the end decision. For, for I don't believe that I would be able to, um, in good conscience, um, objectively, make it. All right, let's go. Chop you to head down the hall um, and turn the, the sort of the tight corner again. The busyness of the hospital is a bit out of sorts, but. It's also sort of comforting to walk down these halls. You see young Archie, the page boy, uh, telling some young couple to fuck off as he skips down the hall some more. And you eventually come towards... Why do we employ that boy? Liston's office, um, which is, again, sort of in the darkest corner of the hospital, off the, off the main strip. There's no one surrounding here. In fact, it almost seems like no one wants to approach. Do you think he's inside? I imagine he is. Yes. I'm uh, sure he is. Why did she knock? <laughs> Hello, here. Doctor Liston. Hi. Um, it, it's Mr. Duncan. Uh, I'm here with Ursula. I was wondering, um, would it be all right if uh, we came inside and had a little chat? Are you the tough white car, sat here? I told him that here for me. Well, the very um, same. Maybe come in. Oh, ah, come in. I mm. open the large oak doors. And you and, see uh, a darkened office, disheveled. There's broken clay skulls shattered on the ground, papers strewn about. A window sits only half open with like slotted light coming in from the gray sky. Liston sits at his desk, eyes open staring down at a pile of papers but not really focusing so you're the two right. he sent to fucking evaluate me we just want to talk uh dr liston um is it all right if we light some candles is uh, it you fucking want to talk outside. or yeah do you want to hear me talk because it went off without a fucking hitch duncan i stood up there all the people around it was beautiful i had my i had my fucking cleaver right there and I, wham one go blood spattered up on my couch and then oh you should have seen it round the new i right on it and so and so and so and two and a half fucking minutes he stands up do you believe it the fast this one that's ever done in the hospital, the fastest one in the history of medicine, and these fucking wankers, they think it's important that he died. Come on. He walks over past you and, like, shuts the door. <sighs> it was um, beautiful, mate. Both of them, beautiful. You should have seen it. You two, Ursula, you would have been so proud. And he locks the door. Of course. Yes. Um... <sighs> Dr. Liston, um, it seems, though, that that while um, your practices are um, inspiring and you're always um, doing your best to um, push, push doing my best, the not only push the boundaries, but push what we can do. Listen, mm -hmm. Ursula, yes. Yes. Duncan, you know as well as I that any second that they have is more pain. So I go quick, and he lost his balls, and that sucks. But ultimately... That was a second of pain. I mean, you, you died, did say so. also. Yes, he also he also passed as well, yeah. um, which which does cost the hospital um, um, in reputation and also in in money as well. Um, right, right, right. Yeah, lawsuits that could come from that. Um, but I, it it definitely could be worse. Right? It could be worse. Um, it could be worse. It could be so much worse. I could be slashing and hacking and doing all this and doing that, but I didn't. I did right. one thing. Right. Ursula, which, which, you which must. You must. He walks over to you. Ursula, you must understand. No, what we're doing. You've seen the pain. You've seen them. You've you've dabbed the foreheads of the sweating bodies as they as they fight the green gain green and they, and they do all that. You you you've been there. You know how important it is to be quick. No, I suppose at least. The patient went quickly. That's right. Dr. Liston, 
What was the patient's diagnosis? I don't know. It oh. doesn't matter. They say, could I do it quickly? Oh, and he turns around, like tossing some more papers up in the air. Oh. Why do they have to send you to? Why couldn't it be some wanker I hate? Why has it got to be the two people in this hospital that I think are good at their jobs? I, I think that's why they sent us. Uh, yes. The two of you, 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 you're not. And he sits down like a bit deterred. Dr. Liston. To be perfectly honest. Uh, uh, yes, please. Uh, sir. I, I just wanted to say that we both respect you very much. And Indeed. neither of us want to put you out of a job or keep you, keep you from doing what it is that you do the very best, which is surgery. Yes, yes, definitely not. We definitely don't want to put you out there. But we just, we just need a reason to be able to give Mr. Right. Grinterby. Give me a flip. Mm. I will be talking. I'm talking. I'm trying to convince him. Sure. Ah. Perfect. And he sort of sighs. And you feel the same way in Duncan? Duncan, you feel some yes. way? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 was, I was lost there. It, it's been quite a day already, and it's not, it's not even um, practically morning yet. Yes, I feel the same way. Um, we'd just like to have an answer. And he spins around, almost like in a dramatic flurry, and leans over his desk for a moment, and then light fills the office as you see he's standing over an oil lamp, and all of a sudden the office is sort of greeted a little bit warmer. For the first time you see him bathed in light, you see the blood all over his hands and, like, the dried blood. Still, you know, and he's, like, biting his nails, like, dried blood in his, in his beard, and he's like, oh, have a seat. And he pulls over a rusty chair and like leans back but you do feel the change in the room from like this cold almost like Jekyll Hyde scene to like okay this is the guy you know and sort of respect oh yeah it's <sighs> difficult listen I'm trying to save these people and ultimately accidents happen but that's all this was is an accident right Yes, and you did make that clear on your report that it was an accident. Um, do you feel like this accident could have been avoided? Do you feel like there was a potential for things to go slightly differently? Of course um, it could have say, been different if it was five fucking years ago before it... And he sort of like hesitates for a moment. Oh, never mind. Oh, no, what do you mean? Is, is, this, is this a new um, vision? Of, of of how medicine um, might be evolving that you know like it's to, not um... medicine and how it's evolving and visions and all that load of bollocks <sighs> Ursula you've known me longer than Duncan you must have seen it five years ago I was on top of the world I was I was cutting and chopping faster than all of them and then they started barreling downhill and you've seen the change in me hadn't you you have been a little um Less your usual chipper self. But that's not myself. That's not my... It's not because of me. You... I... How do you... And he's, again, he, like, stands up and, like, walks over to the window. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. It's... It's not in the world of science. Just leave it at that. Um, all right. Tell me... Doctor, listen. If you were to do the procedure again, would you change anything about your approach? I would try to, but I'm missing. I'm. I can't. I'm not. There's. I'm not whole. And he says, and he says with with like wide sympathetic eyes. You sort of get the sense that he's. Like, holding something back. Uh, I'm going to look around the room. Yeah. Oh, no, that's... Well, this would be seeing, but I'm wondering whether or not I could use thinking. Ah, oh, I'll tell you what. I stand up, and I start cleaning up the room. Well, first things first. 
this room is a right mess. I'm going to help you clean it up. And as I'm uh, cleaning things up, I'm going to look for anything that would indicate why he's... Uh, sure, you know, give me a flip. A Joe, bit. what are you doing to me? Um, Ursula talks. She's she's a talker. Okay. Did you succeed, Justin? I did succeed. So I start, you know, yeah, you, um, picking up like old mugs and cups you and you things. pull up a collection of papers that are like <coughs> dated three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, and they're sort of like not diaries. There's nothing specific written on them, but you notice the handwriting is the same, but so much more tired, almost. You know, it's like changed. It's it's become more frazzled, a little less sensical. Oh, I see. And uh, Ursula, what do you say? We're we're talking about uh, some old cases. And do you remember when I was assisting you in the theater, and there was a procedure that they called you in for a special because they knew that they just had to have you. I believe that was a um, that was an arm, wasn't it? An I, arm amputation yeah. on I that little remember. girl. Good girl. You Very did good. such a wonderful job, and oh, she ended up surviving despite did. the fact that she had a terrible infection for weeks. Infection. Well, that was a lot of you too. Well, you know, dabbing their forehead thank and doing you. whatever you do. That but is what I do best. Definitely dabbing the forehead. I dab so many. Foreheads. You know that sweat is half the killer. I mean, you've got to get a good layer of blood on your hands before you go into somebody, but uh, that sweat that'll just ruin you. Absolutely. I fuck. And he walks over and sits back down. Maybe you're right. Maybe I just need to hang up my coat. <sighs> I I don't think that's necessarily the answer, Dr. Lipton. Well, I know the answer, but it's not like either you are going to... Fuck. What's going on? I can't say. Ah, uh, okay. With all due respect... Why not? How do you expect us to come in here and discuss with you this tragedy that happened this morning and be told that there's a part of the story we're not privy to? Ursula, it's not a part of the story. It's the entire thing. He walks over with his, like, crusted hands and puts them on your shoulders. You don't understand what you don't know. Then tell me. I can't tell you. Tell me. You'll think I'm crazy. Look. And he walks over the door again and makes sure it's locked. And he turns it back and says, Green Turpy sent you in here because he wanted you to clear me for active duty. And if I tell you what I know, you're going to not clear me for active duty because you're going to think I'm crazy. With all due respect, Dr. Liston, you chopped a man's leg off in two and a half minutes and took his testicles with it. And was he, it using him? And he died. He was pretty old. I think you're... On your way to being considered out of your mind, as it is. I'm not trying to say I'm not out of my mind. All I'm saying is he was like 35. That's old enough. He's gone past your prime at that point. Be you should that have many kids it, by then. Be that as it may. You're still... If I may, uh, please. If I may interject. <laughs> please. I apologise, Ursula. Um, sometimes... Um, even though it might feel um, like we'll think you're crazy, uh, sometimes the only way to really get through something emotionally, you know, something that's bothering you, um, something that um, you, know, feel, you feel is rather strange, sometimes the best thing to do is to talk about it. Don't and start if you don't have bringing that talk, nonsense. No, I'm, I'm going to. You gave me this exact talk not too <sighs> long ago. You told me that because I was I was concerned, I was having lots of anxiety about my exams, and you told me that you could I could show you my anxiety, even though I thought that you would think less of me, and I did. I was a nervous wreck in front of you, and look, we're still friends. But it's right? not the same thing. This isn't just nervous for exams. This is this is bigger. Even so, you if you don't it? have anyone to talk to about it. There's nothing that we can do to help you. And that's a heads. That's a beautiful Ooh. queen right there. Perfect. We're helping, I'm guessing? That's the... Oh, it could be helping, yes. <sighs> he looks around. Fine, but not here. Come on. And he walks over to the window and, like, opens it and climbs out. <laughs> Ursula follows without hesitation. Oh, nope. um... No, I'm not going to crease my suit. And I, I walk out the door and... 
And as you go to the door and like unlock, he leans back. He's like, it's a fucking window. No. (laughs) I, I, uh, fine. And I go through. And you exit just as Ursula did to sort of a muddy, soft dirt garden. And you walk through to the small courtyard in the center, but it's sort of a reserved area. There's a bank of trees that sort of are cut off from the main courtyard where you've sometimes sat and eat your lunch. And still early morning gray, the rain hasn't fallen yet, but sort of a wet mist immediately clings to your skin and clothes, sort of a chilly, almost like getting out of out of the lake. And uh, he bites his blood-stained fingernails and turns around and says, all right, I'm going to tell you both this on one condition. If you decide that I can't do it anymore, if you think I'm fucking crazy, don't let this be the reason, because I can still cut All right. Okay. Do either of you believe in them? Other things? You know, being nay, washerwoman, laundresses, brownies? Um, I'm a Christian woman. The Bochin, goblins, hobgoblins, fairies, things like that. Uh, Um... I believe they exist in myth and legend. This, I, I get that, that but listen, this, don't, let's just pretend for a second that yes. it's not just myth and legend, all right? All right. Uh, you said you wanted Pretending. to hear, Ursula. I do, I do. I'm sorry. Of course. Let's call this a judgment-free zone. I'm going to put on my judgment-free hat. You put on yours. All right. Do, 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 do. And you, Duncan... Put on your judgment-free hat. I, I, I forgot it. No, all right, fine. I didn't fine, see you put, right. put it all the way on. I want to I, see your fingers on. Put, I, your, put I it on. on. I threw it up in the. I threw it up in the put air. Put it all the way on. I want this to I, I, Use both hands. I, all right, fine. I'm put your hat on. on. Here we go. Oh, I've got the judgment-free hat. No, now I'm putting it on, and I'm all, all of a sudden Scottish as well. All right, there we go. Good. All right. It now is listen. A judgment-free hat, and that means you can't judge. Now listen here. I used to be the best. Top top of this, all this. You know, chopping cat and, and you you'll you'll understand because you've seen it before. And when you're the best there's there's something that, that happens that people they, they recognise you. You become special. But not just special in the regular world, you also get special in the narrow. The narrow is right. this place, all right? It's it's not just here. It's the back alleys, it's the side streets, it's places you don't even notice before. But but when they point it out to you, when, once you see it, shops and alleyways and blankets and gambling houses and all these things, where all these creatures exist, these goblins and hobgoblins and fays and bing knives and washerwomen and laundresses and bachins, and they're all there, they're all real. They're... they're, they're it's like, it's like imagine imagine walking down Edinburgh and looking down a street and, and, and then looking at a blank wall one day and then the next day, it's, it's its own alley. It's got its own place. Little signs, little cobblestone streets and and down there isn't, aren't there humans, but everything, all these creatures from mythical lands and they hid, you see. But when, when we start getting more populace and, and when we started losing our way they, they, they hid behind the veil the, the narrow it's like a it's like another this is what I'm talking about this is why you don't I can see you're both staring at me oh. you're wearing the hat you said you you put on, I saw you put on the hat I'm not I'm not judging I'm just uh, uh, confused so you're saying that there are ima- imaginary there are creatures that we th- heretofore thought were imaginary what do you think they all came from all these folk actually, fails all these little lore stories where do you think oh, they came oh, from do you think people just made them up i mean it's well, no I more mean, made up than god very... above all i'm saying is this they, they they exist they're real and they went into hiding because they realized and when you're gifted when you're smart enough they they reveal themselves to you because they know that you're not a threat and sometimes you can help them. And they did so to me about five years ago. They revealed themselves to me. They they showed me about the narrow. This is and all the- fascinating. So 
How does this impact your day-to-day -day life, doctor? That doesn't impact my day-to-day -day life. What happened to me when I found out about the Nero did... I just fucking... He looks around. There's like a rustling from the bushes behind him. Look. You might think I'm crazy. And that's fine. But I can prove it. You both come to my to house to us. tonight for dinner. I'll tell you why. And I'll show you. I'll show you. Oh, Dr. Liston, that leaves us very little choice. We were asked to get back to M Mr. Grin Grinterby. Yeah, by tomorrow morning, I heard. I got ears too. Listen, you come to my house tonight for dinner. I'll cook a nice lamb. We'll have dinner. I'll show you the narrow. And when you come into work tomorrow, at the very least, you'll understand that I'm not crazy. Ch and maybe you can help me be my full self again. Ursula, and he says with sort of like a sadness. Ursula shoots a look over to Mr. Duncan. What what facial expression are you making right now? It's just a very straight-lipped, like pursed, just not saying anything. Do we need to bring anything in particular? No, just yourself and bring those fucking hats because you're gonna need them. And he pushes past the two of you and begins climbing through the window and stops and says, "Look." You don't have to, you don't have to believe me yet. Just be ready. And if you really want to trust that I can do my job again, if you help tonight, maybe, maybe I can be back to how I was. 100%. And he leans back through and heads into his office, leaving the two of you standing in the garden. I'll, I'll bring some dinner rolls. You say to nothing. <sighs> to nothing. <laughs> Well, that was rather interesting. I have a confession, Ursula. All right. I didn't put on a no-judgment hat. It was just a regular invisible hat. You promised. I, I don't believe I own a non-judgment hat, and it's very, very, very difficult not to judge without one. I'm very worried about it tonight, but if he says that I don't have to believe now, then I don't have to. We will see tonight, and he will give us a, his so-called proof, and I will bring cabbage rolls. Wonderful. Well. Very well. Um, I suppose we should go back in through the window. Um, I, I plan to walk around. I don't want to go back through that filthy office. Oh, um, all right. Walk with me. Oh, oh, yep, of course. And as you walk through the garden, you uh, see Cumberland sort of carrying a stack of papers walking back towards you. Uh, 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 you're supposed to be speaking with Liston. What are you doing walking in the garden? Gaining some perspective. Are... Indeed. Perspective. Yes, we, we, did, we did speak with him. And um, um, he seems to be doing well. Um and uh, he's invited us over for dinner this this evening. That um, well, it's not we, a um, dinner. Yes, I, I I think that he's under quite a bit of pressure right now, and uh, mm -hmm. I think it would be good to see him outside of the hospital environment. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Well, he's a bit more relaxed. But if you approve him for service, and he is not but one hundred percent ready, it's your hits yes of course right. also right. Ursula I was wondering if you were doing anything Saturday night I have a husband thank you well, for the repeated invitations I didn't know that um. he walks away <laughs> and we're going to end there for the mid game post <laughs> <laughs> That's Yowzers. right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this what? Yowzers. Yes. Yowzers. This is, this is the part of the game where we stop the action and we jump to you, the fans, and ask you a little bit of question about tonight's game. How is everyone having a time? How is everyone having a time? I hope everyone's having How? a good time. I'm having a great time. Sitting. I'm it's having a blast. Fun. It yeah. feels very Downton Abbey. I feel like I'm playing Downton Abbey right now. I keep fucking up my accent so bad because Harlan <laughs> yes. is so the, good the at Scottish. Scottish. And yes. Justin, uh, you're like solid in the British. And I'm just 
You do. Just hovering around I've, the I've middle. I've slipped up a bit. I've done a couple of glottal stops that I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is the mid-game post. This is where we stop the action. We jump to you, the community. We ask you a question. What's the question for the mid-game post B? I'm mm. thinking. I mean, there's lots of names. What, what was the style of invisible hat that <gasps> Dr. Liston wore? Was it a top hat? Was it a bowler hat? Mm. Are we just asking for the best solution? What best, is the best creative thing? decision. Be creative. Yeah, sure. We can go with that. What was the style of hat that Robert Liston wore? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the no judgment hat. What does a no judgment hat look like? Yeah, especially Robert Liston's no judgment hat. Mm -hmm. Yes, Robert Liston's no judgment hat. Just because this is going to be extra crazy. It's going to have jester testicles on it. Jester. Mine would just be a pool noodle. Just a pool noodle sticking up. My real no judgment hat would probably be probably like a baseball cap. No judgment hat. What's a Tam O'Shanter? No mm, mine would be a big top hat. Big top hat. That's that's about the. Oh, what is a cap? Do you think oh, it's a I'm Scottish not... bonnet? Oh, a Scotch bonnet. A Scottish <laughs> bonnet. Does it look at all like the pepper? No, you know, like that typical Scottish thing. Scotch bonnet? No, you know it's Scottish. <laughs> Hat. I'm looking it up. Scottish. Oh yes, like the like oh a tam? yes, the little the little floofy on the top. Mm -hmm, exactly. It's, it's called, called a tam. A tam. That's a Oshanta. Uh, wait, shy. Uh, Glen Gary. Look up Scottish tam. Scottish tam. Yes, Oshanta. Tam Oshanta. Weird. <laughs> Mid game. Okay, we got yeah. Deer stalker. Yeah, yarmulke. <laughs> Dirty cooking pot that he only thinks is invisible. Invisible helmet. Harlan. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I think it's got to be an invisible helmet for sure. You think so? Yeah. Or we have what bowler hat with a blank expression, embroidered. What's a bowler hat? A bowler hat is a like a round, B -O Frank Sinatra type hat. No, B O L A R. Bowler hat. Yeah, I, I think that might be bowler hat spelled wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's that's applicable also. <laughs> um. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Are you just reading something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fucking terrible. Mm hmm. Any of it? Mm hmm. Such an asshole. Mm hmm. Whatever. Um, fuck. Okay. Robbie Burns hat. That's, that's the Tam O' Shandy. The Tam O' Shandy. Oh, I could use a glass of water, though. Yeah. You okay being alone? Do you want to have some of this? Me? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Tam O'Shanter. You guys are moving through this pretty quick. It might be a shorter stream. That's okay. Yeah, just letting everybody know if they're getting ready for the night. Um, it's probably going to be pretty, not short, but I, mean, I could see us ending at like 1030-ish, especially if we end this mid-game post pretty quick. Um, I like a lot of these suggestions. I kind of, kind of like the paper sailor hat. <laughs> Just because Robert Liston's not fucking crazy. He, well, that's your opinion. Um, he's me. I am. He is. We are. He and you. Are. So, how long ago did the brownies and pixies contact you? Listen, they're still here. I can't say anything. <laughs> They're in the house. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's the way it is. How you doing, huh? Doing good. Distracted. Yeah, How me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. What's the word? 
What's the word? The word bird. is the word is bird. Bird, bird, bird. Oh, bird is the word. About Larry? Bird. 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 Larry? Bird. 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 Bird's the word. Um. I, I think we're ready. I think we're going to pick the hat and then go back to it. Let's do it. Shall Let's we? do it. I'm thinking, I think the Tam O'Shanter is the right one. I think so, too. And who do suggested it. that? Yeah, Tam O'Shanter is... That's Caleb. Caleb. Caleb Hall, I think. Caleb. And thank you for the photo demonstration. Woo. Joe can reach through screens. Confirmed. All right, let's just power through. I think this one might end a bit early, I was saying to the stream, Justin, but... Uh, okay. Let's have some fun. Only because you guys are motoring through it. And, motoring! You know, concise and f tight and fun might be the way to go tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, without <laughs> right further ado, we return to Robert Liston's 300% mortality rate. You arrive in front of Robert Liston's house, the address you get from the head nurse as you leave the hospital that afternoon. You decide to arrive together? Question mark? Yeah, I think safety in numbers plus... I, I, I think so, yes, walking. You're going to have to walk back as well, so might as well walk there together. It wouldn't do for me to arrive at uh, the home of um, a man by myself. Ooh. Not mm. seemly. Very true. These are great times. <laughs> Just These are very ripper times. Very Jack the Ripper-ish. And uh, yeah, as you walk towards his stately manor, you get this sort of sense of opulence and... But also sort of like cobwebby, you know, it's a very dreary home, uh, despite its ornate, beautiful structure. And as you approach, you, uh, you see the large front door and step on the porch to see it swing open. And Robert listens and saying, there's like, I honestly didn't know if you were going to come. I'm so fucking proud of both of you. Come inside. Uh, oh, all right, thank you. Let me take your coats. I, I brought Come. dinner rolls. You didn't have to, but thank you. Did I you brought cabbage it? rolls. Well, you, yes, there's a yes, lot of rolls, rolls, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Come inside. And he well, I figured it'd be like, like a nice, uh, yes. And you see a beautiful, right. large front hall area with, with mahogany, you know, flooring and wall poles, as far as the eye can see. And he takes wow, both of your jackets and hangs them up on the wall and says, uh, Welcome to my home. This is what I bought when I first moved here to join St. Francis to be their head surgeon. I hope I get to keep it along with my job. Uh, <gasps> uh, oh, don't cry. No, it's all right. Tears make the pain go away for a little bit. Well, uh, so does food. Um, if you wanted to. Um, well, no, I, let, I, let Wrinkle take kitchen? that from you. Wrinkle! And uh, you see a figure approach from down the hall. He looks like a regular man, maybe five foot five, but he sort of walks with a strange limp. And as he exposes himself to the light, you see that his legs are covered in hair. And they're thin, thin like an animal's legs, almost like a goat. And as he approaches, he uh, sort of passes through the light for a moment and comes into view as a regular human. Oh. Oh. What was that? What was what? Uh, nothing. Um, right. Anyway, this is Wrinkle. Wrinkle. This is um, Duncan and this is Ursula. They're here for dinner. Uh, Mr. Duncan. And Pleasure the man's like, Wrinkle. Mr. Duncan, it is nice to meet you. And you are uh, Ursula, nice to meet you as well. My uh, name is Wrinkle. Uh, please Wrinkle. make your acquaintance. Do you, do you have a, a, a last name or do we just call you Wrinkle? You can just call me Wrinkle. That is all Liston calls me as well. I don't just call you a Wrinkle, I call you my wrinkly little boy. And he like kind of taps him on the shoulder. And Wrinkle was wearing like a 
like tux and he's this got this tight german face almost completely bald except for small wisps of white hair on either side and a very large nose and tight features that are all stretched with wrinkles and he doesn't really flinch at it he's like yes sir <laughs> let's go in to have a little bit did you find that painting and wrinkle sort of walks back down the hall to the darkness and picks up and turns around and you see a large painting of like animal legs that he was like holding a like waist high he's like yes i put it here in the darkness is that okay and uh listen's like yeah of course just i would it's not even important just put her over there and uh he's like yeah and he leans it on the wall and uh, heads back into the kitchen come on this way he leads you to a large fire room where all the fires happen oh a fire um, room it is it's wow, like oh my goodness it's, it's got a large fireplace damn me how many other fires three 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 fire fireplaces. rooms i'm i'm that is too much for my english sensibilities i'm picturing just one fireplace thank you very much no it's 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 three and liston walks you over wow. to a, a bar where three glasses sit and he says a toast first off and he hands you each one says the belief and he clings um, yes to believe Ding. now i'm wearing my um no judgment hat as you can see and um i can I'm see your hat not. you don't have to be an asshole about it all i'm saying is coming into this with an open eye and he downs his drink it's only like a thumb it's like the tiniest little it's like a tiny martini glass oh and he takes the empty or did you all finish it no um ursula took a very dainty sip and he's like uh, yes and and so did um mr duncan and he just stands there waiting <laughs> Um, it's a beautiful place you have here. It's meant awesome. to be a toast. You just done it, and then I take the glasses, and then the wrinkle can bring you wine for dinner. Um, oh, I don't I'm not really much of a drinker. Drink alcohol. No. Oh. oh. <laughs> Me as well. I'll wait. Um, 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 He's just like sitting there, like. Right, well. Um, bottoms what up. Is it that they say <laughs> bottoms up. Yes, indeed. Do your health. <laughs> Oh, and he takes the three empty glasses and puts them back a wrinkle and wrinkle comes back in and you notice he's got that same sort of like gaunt but again looks normally human and you question for a second if he was your mind playing tricks on you and almost I mean you can flip on it if you want mm, no and uh, yeah he hands the glasses to wrinkle and wrinkle is like jawohl dinner is served can't get that accent and then it's scottish is like wonderful. <laughs> scottish is like all right and uh he, you say scottish, scottish is like, like and he walks scottish. you through he walks you through the through the, the hallway and he points at me, this is my great granddaddy percival liston beautiful man also surgeon killed way more than me so if you think i've got a bad look at him because his death toll is like in the hundreds mind you he was a murderer, but I'm not. Um, I see. Lovely. Well, um, t to be perfectly honest, um, um, I, I would love to uh, um, sit down at this beautiful table and, and enjoy the meal that um, Wrinkle has prepared for us. Ah, yes. But don't you also want to learn about the Nero? Oh, very much so. Yes, yes. Actually, that's what I was going to get at, but I was being uh, pleasant. Um, I was exchanging a side friend, and he slaps you on the shoulder. Tonight, we travel. And he walks into the room and opens it up, and spread out on the table uh, are beautiful. Like, there's like a beautiful roast lamb, and and all these empty dishes. There's like enough for like eight seats. And he's like, pick any spot. And everything's like. Everything's like really opulent and beautiful and stuff, and then there's like my like shitty cabbage like, rolls. Cabbage. Yeah, like little <laughs> cabbage rolls. Like it's in like a clay it. casserole dish, and there's yeah. one missing because you like you kept it, it at home. Over. You're like, uh, I want to keep leftovers for dinner. My mm. goodness, this looks fantastic. Yes, welcome. Oh, down. I can sit anywhere, anywhere you'd like. And as you enter the room, yeah, you do. You feel this sense of like joy you can feel it as you enter the room almost the the artwork on the wall seems especially vibrant in here something about this room seems closer to the core you don't understand what that means but it feels 
nice in here. And Liston recognizes it in the two of you. He says, you feel it too. The narrow. What is the narrow? <sighs> Shit down and I'll tell you. And you eat sit down. What down? Sorry. Shit down. You, you asked... Oh. I see. Sorry, it was your accent. It just kind of played a trick on me there. No, shit down in a chair. And he pulls out a chair and sits down at the head of the table. <laughs> he wants us to sit down. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Many years Thank ago, you. when I was at the top of my game, as I said, people came to me, special people from the Nero. They told me that there was this whole world beneath ours and that because I was special, I could come down and and visit in a way. What and, what kind of people came? What do you mean? Well, there were many different types. You notice there's a painting behind you. Look, and he like turns around. And you see there's a painting on the wall of like these small little creatures, and uh, they look sort of like brownies, which is like a, a mythical fairy creature, like the shoemaker, the ones that come to your house after night and sweep and clean and all that kind of stuff. He says, creatures like that. My family used to paint all these pictures. I grew up staring at them, and I didn't quite understand what they meant at first until I inherited this house. Then they came. Now, I know you don't believe me. But just look. Look at the picture. Tell me it doesn't feel strange to you. Go ahead, get up. I'm, I'm, I'm just about to... Have we already eaten? Sorry. No, no, we st the food's still in, in front of us. We haven't eaten. Just get... And he stands up and he, like, pulls you. Just come here. I'm just, I'm just quite starved and I would... I would you okay, can just right, wait. Fine. And he walks you over to the picture uh, and... I know, like, I don't want to be look, rude. Look at this painting. And both give me a, uh, a scene flip. I will. I will as well. 20. Success. Yeah. And a fail. Success. And you only have one flip, do you? I only have one, yes. So, Duncan, you just see a painting of brownies. But it's, it's as a beautiful painting. As you're staring at it, Ursula, you do sort of... Something about it fills you with like a sense of simmering joy. You, you not only can sense these creatures in the painting, but it feels alive to you in a weird way. It's so peaceful. You understand. See, not all people can read the narrow as quickly as this. Ursula, I think you're one of the special people. Oh, well, thank you. Come back. Let's go. Sit. Eat. And as he sits back down, he says, Anyway, long story short, they came to me and told me that I was one of the chosen few and that with a certain amount of guidance, I could enter the narrow see those closeted doors, see those back alleyways. And that is when I met a wrinkle. Not the wrinkle that you know, but the true wrinkle. Come here, wrinkle. And wrinkle opens the door again, and this time it is undeniable. His lower half is a beast. It is covered in fur and thin legs and... His entire top half looks normal, except there are small horns now sticking out from, from the scalp in his head. And he <gasps> walks out with that same gaunt My. and sets the lamb down in the center of the table. That. Wrinkle was the first of the narrow that I experienced. I, th that I, is... I thought I Absolutely. saw something. Um... It's all right. It's fantastic. Take How did you do this? You. This is is this some sort of magic trick? Wrinkle well, 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 sort of like uh, rolls his eyes. <laughs> like Where he rolls his eyes from? in annoyance almost, and he's like oh, and he walks back towards the kitchen. It's no magic. These are the creatures of the Nero, the fairy folk. He's a Bokken. It's a type of domestic hobgoblin in uh, folklore originally. They're sometimes mischievous, but they're always helpful when the need arises. I helped him out of a particularly difficult time, and as such he's pledged himself to my service. And now he stays here, being my friend, and helping me when guests come over. Most of the time we just play Scrabble. Did, and did he cook this meal? Yes, of course. Well, he helped me. I like cooking a little bit myself. And Wrinkle walks out again and brings out like a large salad 
the like click of his feet across the floor and he are like hollow as the two of you stare thank you wrinkle this is wonderful uh, yes. meal and wrinkles like you're welcome all right wonderful well, um, and he stands I'm, at attention I'm, I'm, waiting to be like dismissed Um, oh, you can go then. I thought maybe they have questions for you, Linkle, but you could. And again, he sort of like rolls his eyes and walks out. I'm still not even sure how you did that. So, so is he part of the local theatre troupe? He's not part of the or... local anything. Duncan, you can't be this daft. But he had legs just a minute ago, and now he does. Duncan, feel like... all of this, the narrow, the creatures. Goat legs. The real. It's not an optical illusion, it's not a theatre. And as we're right. eating, you know, mm. um, they, um, um, eat your dinner. well, so if if you don't mind, Doctor, listen. With my hat of no judgment firmly placed on my head, and see, seeing and meeting Wrinkle and seeing your lovely art collection, if I am to believe in the narrow. And I am to accept the story that you presented to myself and Dr. M Mr. Duncan this evening. How does that impact your ability to perform surgery? <sighs> ah, and therein lies the rub. And he takes a big bite of lamb. She, when I first went to the narrow, it was all sunshine and rainbows. It was an experience beyond anything I've ever experienced. The livelihood, the shops, the, the creatures. It was... Mind blowing, but my mind could handle it. My mind could handle it so much that it became attractive to a few nefarious creatures in the narrow. There is one they call Black Donald. I don't know if you've heard of him, but in folklore he is essentially the devil. He owns one of the shops down there in the narrow. I wager more than I could. And they took a piece of me. He's in my mind. Ever since then, it's been piecing things together. It's been trying to get back to that point. My mind has has tapered off. A piece of me is missing. No matter how many times I try to go back, the minute he spots me, he knows what I'm there for. I've tried everything. Bargaining. Trading. I've even tried sneaking in and getting it back a few times myself, but it's just no good. Like Donald knows it's too powerful. He knows that it's the only thing that makes me better. And he knows that I'd do anything to get it. And thus, he will not give it back. So you're saying that you went to a magical place and gambled away a piece of your mind to the devil? It wasn't, uh, it wasn't gambling. And he's not exactly the devil. He's still a shop owner. It's not like he has powers. But, yes... For lack of a better term, the reason I've gone so downhill in the last few years is because of him. Because of the peace of my mind he took. So why haven't you asked for him to give it back? I have. Or, um... I tried everything. There's nothing material in this world that he wants. No. He lives on chance. He lives on betting. And I have nothing more to give besides my brain. And I've got it. Have you tried to make another bet with him? You can only have one bet with a Black Donald. And that is why he takes a swig of red wine. That's why I said that maybe you not only could see the narrow, but maybe you could help me get my mind back. See, he only makes one deal with a person. He's had mine, and he got what he needed but he hasn't made a deal with either of you two and he also doesn't know that we're friends oh dear I, maybe look Ursula and he kind of like leans over the table a little bit just like you, you saw me in my prime you saw me you knew how good I was you know how much this brain is worth if I could only get back to my full self again then what kind of a wager did you lose mine was a simple Mine was a simple coin toss. 
I know it was foolish. Oh, and what did, what did you stand to gain? More than you could possibly imagine. He would have given me the ability to grant myself four wishes. And what are we meant to wager? I don't know. This is entirely on you. Look, I, I can't... I can't put this upon you. Neither of you. And as he's talking, Wrinkle comes out again. And again, that clip-clopping of his, like, hooves on the floor startle you. And he asks if you, like, need anything. Uh, mm. I'll have another glass of this wine, please. This is actually quite nice. I do actually quite fancy drinking, it turns out. And he sort of goes... Um, and he pours you wine and, and goes back to the kitchen. Oh, yes. Gladly, thank you. I'm not saying you have to do more than you're wor worth, but I'm only working with half capacity up here. Maybe you can figure out a way to, to convince Black Donald to to give me what I want back or, or make a wager worthy for yourselves. Is there anything that you'd be willing to wager? That's a difficult My. question. British etiquette, I'd wager that right now. I okay. think that I would I would do well without it. And I feel like I'm losing it a little bit right now. This wine is fantastic. Where did Mr. you get it? Duncan. It's is this it, it's narrow wine, actually. No, it's all oh. right. Tonight's meant to be a bit of a celebration, but I also need your help, and I'm also gonna show you the narrow. Well, would you be able to I'd wager it? something? I'd wager something right now. What Let's flip a coin. Do I have a coin, Ursula? I no, like don't, don't do it now. Oh, wait for... for Black Donald. Well, why can't I do it realm. You have to go to him. We'll just do a practice run. Let's see whether it works. Okay, Ursula, you uh, you wager something. Wager something for me right now. And I'll, wager something and for you. What. You I... wager. Yeah, we'll, we'll just wager. I right wager now. this dinner roll. All right. That one dinner roll for one um, chair. I have a chair right underneath me. I will wager that. Like, really that's my chair. Uh, oh, heads wait, or, let's see. Heads or tails? Heads. What do you think? Heads for you. The um, jolly queen. I'll take tails. tails. I'll take tails. No, no, I don't think that. Is that how wor this works? Wait, I don't I've never done a, a Just wager with a coin. Them. All right. Wait, what did you say again, Ursula? A dinner roll for heads. No, no, heads, right. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> it's tails, which means I get myself a dinner roll that's how it's done <laughs> she tosses it at you i will take my duncan, dinner roll. Thank listen, you. duncan i i can't i understand give me playing, more of this wine i understand you're playing but my livelihood's on the on the line i need you to help me i need you to do uh, it for real with black donald will you all right. help me yeah let's do it ursula ursula yes I think I think I'm I'm on board. Well, Let's go. I'm on board. You're yeah. feeling well, very excited because you just won a dinner roll, but I think you need to be cautious. Let's go. And he pushes back his chair. <clears throat> Follow me. Do you have any more of that? What was that liquid that you gave us that we drank? Come here. Uh, he in stands the fire up and walks over to the door. This is important. Let's go. I know it's important. All right. And he walks into the know. kitchen. If we could bring some of that that wall, that grappa or whatever it was. He walks into the kitchen and you follow and next to the fridge or the icebox is like a really tight, almost like immeasurable door. It's tiny. It's very thin. And he turns to you with a smile and opens it and starts heading down a thin staircase to the cellar. Come on. This is where the narrow is. Ursula follows, running her hand along the wall. And uh, as narrow. you descend deeper into the cellar of the of the house of the mansion, you have an eerie sense. He reach, he sort of leads you around a series of crates and boxes to a damp corner where you see sort of a, a square stone in the wall, almost the size of the door, but it's just fixed to the wall. And he stops and and bends down and picks up a white stone and turns back towards the two of you. Ursula, Duncan, I need you, now more than ever. You're the only two people I've ever tried to explain the Nero to. And I'm going to take you there. I'm going to show you exactly what this world means. All right. But, 
but All I right. also need my yep. mind back. I need okay. you. I need you to figure it out. I need you to get my mind back from Black Donald. All right. Um, yeah. We, all right. We'll go in there. Are no you wager. not coming with us? I can't. The minute he sees me, he'll know what we're up to. Uh. uh all right. How, how do we find him? Oh, you can't miss him. He's bathed in black. His face is like a, an animal, like a boar. He's got long tusks on either side of him, and his hair spruits up tall, like he's wearing some sort of hat almost. All right. Ask around. People will be eager to show you to him. And Let's he turns go. to both of you and grabs you both by the shoulders. Please, if this works, I'll become a whole person again. All right. Are you going to throw us into that wall? No. Is that what's happening now? Watch. I'm going to draw a door. That'll be your way in. And he scratches into the stone where you've seen like a door scratched many times. And uh, it appears like before you as this like white door. And he steps back. Nero, reveal yourself. And there's like a the white line that he drew all of a sudden begins to glow and pulsate. And he sort of smiles towards the two of you and nods and steps back as the door sort of fills your vision. You don't exactly pass through it. And it's not like it's not like it washes over you, but you can feel yourself moving towards it. The idea of the door sort of spins in your mind and as the feeling washes over you. You begin to feel it like touch on your skin like like ice water, like that mist this afternoon. And before you can tell, you're completely bathed in darkness. And you open your eyes, both of you, to find yourselves lying on a stone street. The dark sky high above you. You're in a thin alleyway, but everything looks a little bit crooked. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. Uh, Ursula. Uh, are you quite are all right? What's the matter I feel with like, you? I, I feel like um, a, a slight tingling all over my entire body. Um, is this magic I'm feeling? Was that some sort of magic potion he gave me? Or is this what it feels like to be drunk? You sit up oh. and you see this tight alleyway with small shops illuminated by candlelight, but the candlelight is bathed in sort of a green blue. The street itself is sort of on an angle and almost looks like it winds up a hill. It's unlike any alley you've ever been down in Edinburgh. This is incredible. Oh, look over there! She points. There's like a flock of like flying creatures that just sort of shoot from one doorway to another. Yeah, like in a blink of an eye, you almost miss them entirely. Whoa. And as Goodness. you're sitting there, there's like a small, excuse me, and like a creature like on all fours moves past you. It's like a big oh. bushy tail. Oh, pardon me. Sort of pushes, oh, no, no problem. And it like bushes past you and like jumps up on, on some like garbage can and like stretches. <gasps> You two look like you're a bit worse for wear. Uh, we've just come through the doorway, and I'm feeling a little bit ill. Mm. Do you know what where I could think? find Black Donald? Oh, Black Donald? Why are you looking for him? I have a wager. Oh. You don't, well, do, you don't want to be doing wages with Black Donald, miss. That's bad news. We, we, would, like, we would like to wager against Black Donald. Miss, you and need I to get your friend to... right. I, I suppose you should nip into there, take a moment to compose yourselves. And he hops down and skips off down the street. You're sitting next hey, to we're... sort of an odd uh... shop uh, named Tinny. Mr. Don Duncan, get up this instant. She grabs oh, you by the hand and oh, all right. hauls you to your feet. I'm standing. 
I did tell him I'm not much of a drinker. Uh, please pull yourself <laughs> together. I pull myself together. I'll do the best I can, but I have a feeling my legs are a little too wobbly right now. Let's give him a try then, shall we? And I take a step and I wobble a little bit on the uneven surface and kind of go careening into a stack of crates against one of the uh, the highly angled walls. <laughs> Whoopsie! Woo! Help me up again, Miss Ursula, please. Oh, stay down there. And uh, uh, she looks around at the shop that the monster gestured at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a shop next to you called Tinny. Tinny. I I peek ahead inside. What's What's in there? Yeah, it looks like there is a blue-faced woman. And it's awfully cold as you lean inside. Ooh, excuse me. Eh? Uh, hello. I was hoping you would have something that would assist my friend. He's drunk. Ah, interesting. Bring him in here. Uh, Duncan. Mr. Duncan. At your service. <laughs> Come this way. All right. I'm coming. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look at that thing over there. What is that? It's got two giant legs. and She walks tiny over to you arms. and, like, sort of studies your face. And you see, like, the reflective blue skin on her Ooh. face and her elongated fingers. She has, like, thin hair. Oh, what are you? Ah, yes. Your friend here. Uh, it's quite upset. I I don't, um, I don't know you, miss. Mr. Duncan, pleased to make your acquaintance. I'm here looking for a Black Donald. I'm going to wager a chair. Mmm, Black Donald would be the death of this one. And she looks to you, um, Ursula, and says, I can snap him out of this if you'd like. Uh, of, of course, that would be very helpful. Very well. And she reels back and slaps you harder than you've ever been slapped across the face, Duncan. <laughs> I do believe that helped. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my head. Oh. Why do you seek Black Donald? <sighs> We've heard tell of riches uh, that we might win against him. Black Donald doesn't offer riches, girlie. He offers you a lot more than that. And what what is that? Whatever you most desire. She says as she like prances around you and like picks up your hair and like looks at it. Pretty hair. Have you ever thought about giving it away? She like takes it in her hands. Uh, no, oh. no, I haven't. I, I quite like my hair. Mm. Thank you very much. I best suggest you leave this place before you lose more than you are willing to wager. And she, like, steps towards you to leave you out of the room. Uh, all right, we're, we're, just, we're just leaving now. Thank you very much, kind yes. miss. Thank you, Tinny. And you exit okay, back uh, to the alleyway to see, Asla. again, the sort of turning nature of the it almost looks like an mc escher like it like turns mm. as you can walk down it. someone's walking down the side of a building yeah exactly Ursula, <laughs> Ursula. i um i'm having a, a hard time understanding exactly what's going on so um we're we're here in this strange part of edinburgh she grabs you by the ears mr duncan have you not been paying attention for one moment in the past hour Dr. Liston Perhaps not. sent us to this place to win a wager to regain his intellect and I think we're over our heads and I don't know if there's any way to get out of it but to use our wits now please tell me I'm not the only one with a head on my shoulders right now um well maybe a head that isn't in excruciating pain um alright so we're here in the Narrows, which looks a bit like Northside, but anyway, um, and we're looking for Mr. Black Donald, right? I remember yes. that much. Yes, and, and he we looks need to... very much like a boar. 
It looks like a boar. Now, are we going to are we going to wager something? I don't. Yes. I don't very much feel like wagering anything. Uh, I, do you think that's a good idea? I mean, this is. I it's mean, a terrible idea. It is a terrible idea. Yes, because if we stop him from working at the hospital, then surely, um, the, surely it, it's 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 going to be bad for him. Yes, but if we go ahead and lose a very important part of ourselves then that's not going to be good either. In fact, that's going to be even worse because then we're going to have our lives ruined and, and eventually something's going to happen in the, in, in the hospital. Oh, dear, my head hurts. Perhaps we can uh, trick him. Do you have any ideas? We can wager something that we don't own or have. We could... Mm. Speak, speak quietly. Perhaps there are people oh, listening. Of, co of course. Well, you're not going to trick him that way, says a voice. Oh. Who said that? Hello? Who was that? <laughs> you're Where a that come from? I'm going to look around, see if I can get the source. Give me a C. I rolled to C. Give me a C. Give me an O. Ooh. Give me a Give flip. P. Every time I roll, oh, I got another 20. Perfect. Yeah. So you look up and you see above you, there's a tree and in the tree sits a man. He has like sort of a guitar lute-esque thing across his chest and he turns it around and sort of flips down off the branch and lands next to you, standing up. He's relatively short, he's about five feet, and he flashes both of you a big smile. I said, you're not going to trick him that way. What, what um, do you know who, about? Who are you? The name's Finn. Looks like it's your Finn. first time in the Narrows, and he holds out his hand to shake. It, A ple pleasure to meet you. Nice, Finn. nice to meet you. Finn. Yes, so, so you, you you tell us that this isn't how we're going to trick him, which which implies that you have knowledge of potential ways that we could trick him. Well, tricking him would be up to you. But ultimately, all I'm saying is, if you're trying to wager something that you don't own, you're not going to fool him that way. Come. Follow me. And he starts walking down the alleyway, which turns as he walks. Do we follow him? I, I don't think I understand, uh, Mr. Finn. Um, so, uh, you, you don't know how to trick him, but you know how not to trick him. So... Uh, um, and he we stops and turns to back to you and like comes right up to your nose. If you want to trick him, that's on you. All I'm saying is there are better ways to do it. At least you'll have a fighting chance if you know a little bit more about him. And I know all there is to know about him. So come with me. All right. All right. And he's right. skipping off down the alleyway. Tree la li la lu la la. Y you oh, first, yes, Duncan. Go on. Oh, okay. gladly. I do wish people didn't snap me out of my drunken stupor. This would be a lot easier if I had the influence. Uh, anyways. You Here follow up a set of stone steps that sort of goes up to a circular alleyway in the middle of this labyrinthian-like alleys of the Narrows of Edinburgh. And he turns when he's in it and says, We're alone now. So what makes you want to go to Black Donald? And why do you want to trick him of all things? Well, but kind of tricking him already. You see, someone that we know had something taken from him. And, well, we need to get it back. Hmm. Well, interestingly enough, I might know how to help. But that depends on a few things. Most important being, what can you offer me? I knew you were going to say that. Well... Um, I have a bow tie, but no, I don't want to give you this one because I, it took me a long time to find it. Um, I, I can give you information about our world. How about that? I don't um, care. Um, what do you mean your world? Things, uh, Listen, in, 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 I'll, I'll cut through the chase. There's one thing I want, something that I don't get, and you can give it to me. I want an uh, answer from the Bodak. Oh, What's yeah, the, the Bodak? The Bodak. Down there in the tide, right? And he points down the sort of turning alleyway that goes on to the left. There's a pub called the Tide. 
In the back corner, you see a dark grey humanoid figure. He can foretell the death of any creature, but he won't tell me how I go. It's driving me mad. If you can find out how Finn, the magician warrior poet, dies, I'll tell you what you need to know about Black Donald. At least give you a fighting chance in trying to trick the bastard. What do you say? Sure, why not? Let's do it. Yes, all right. Down to the tide. Perfect. And he spits in his hand and holds it out to shake. Is this... Is this normal? Of course it's normal. I don't want... Uh, all right. I, I guess... And he pulls his hand back. He's like, I fucking idiot. And he walks past you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he seems to walk into the wall and disappear. <laughs> um, all right. Well, um, I suppose let's go to the tide, unless you just want to break into Black Donald's place and steal the brain or whatever he has. No, let's, let's go down to the tide. You turn leave down the time. short alleyway, do, 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 and do, 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 as it grows tighter, you do, do, see a singular do, 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 door at the end of the hall where do, do, you can hear the music already do, do, do. from inside. <laughs> you open the door, and blue smoke hangs to the ceiling. You see creatures of all shapes and sizes. Again, the room turns. The bar stretches out and almost is so uneven the mugs barely sit on it. You see large, brown, hairy creatures dancing back and forth in front of a fireplace. You see creatures that look entirely made of water, sort of like washing themselves up and down to the music, and it's entirely foreign as you enter. Is it kind of awesome, though? That's totally up to you. I think it's pretty awesome. You see in the corner a man trying to take a big bite of something, and little bites go disappearing out of it and he's like die fucking and he hits the air and a little fairy pops into existence and goes splats on the wall next to you and falls down <gasps> do I see the grey humanoid give me a let's see it's pretty packed in here I will <laughs> well that's a fail but I get to do one more that's also a fail yeah no you don't see anything so and you enter into I... the We'll drop my coin, and I will also do a C. <laughs> oh, that's all right. All right, so he said he's gray, and he's humanoid. He's sitting in the corner. There's only four corners. It can't be that difficult. And yet, going you don't to, see him. I, unless you succeeded. <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, no. You can force the success, but then it gives me an option to change one of your coins. Ooh. I might force it. Okay. Yeah. You force it, and uh, you see in the corner this this gray figure almost seems to appear like shimmering, as if he just sort of phased in. And uh, yeah, there he is. He's over there. <sighs> oh, I I didn't see him. All right, let's go. Who? And she Ursa crosses the room, dodging between the oddly dancing couples. Yeah, and uh, as you do it, why don't you, uh, you... you got to get bumped by something. Oh, no. And you turn, and you see a large, strong man with the wolf head. And he's like... <gasps> um, interesting. I, I have a social skill that I chose. Yeah. It's called always knows how to cheer someone up. Perfect. And he's like... <sighs> I wonder if I can see if I know how to do that. Yeah, you do. If you have the skill, you get to do it. Okay. But you just get to do it. You have oh, you can negate a flip. All you do is you explain how you cheer this guy up. Um, I. Uh, so he looks at you. Uh, you presumably s stepped on his. I take his hand. This very big, tall guy, and <sighs> Ursula is such a tiny little girl, and she spins him underneath <clears throat> her arm, and he has a great. And he looks back at you, and he's like. And he like walks over and starts spinning people like forcefully, and they're like, "What?" Oh! And he's like enjoying it as it clears the way towards the figure in the corner. And as you approach, you see this tall, muscular, almost sculpted creature. It looks like the Vitruvian Man, almost, uh, but with singular limbs and a bald head. As he stands there with almost completely black eyes, 
he sees you coming and uh, welcomes you. Ursula, Duncan, welcome. Uh, hello. Oh, how do you know my name? I see everything, for I am a Bodach. I also know that you come to find out Finn's end. Yes, we do. I ask you, are you willing to pay the price for knowledge like this? What's the price? The price of knowledge is knowing your own end. All right. Sure. Why not? And he... I was actually kind of hoping that I would get to know that, to be honest. And he nods and uh, says, it is done. And you feel something. You feel like this, feel, like something wash over you, but no information is gathered. Well, what happened? Um, return to Finn. And before you can even blink, the gray figure is gone. What? What was that? I didn't learn anything. We, he didn't tell us anything about Finn. I hate no, this place. I really don't like it here either. I much prefer Edinburgh. Hell, London even. God. Let's not go that far. <laughs> All right. Enough. Let's go back to Finn. Anything about fucking London. You well, work your way back to the What is Finn going to tell us? We didn't, we didn't even learn anything for him. Why before don't we just go even, to Black Donald? Before you oh. can head up to the stairwell outside, uh, you leave the tavern and Finn is standing out front with like wet eyes we didn't expect it to come like that but fair enough what did he tell you Finn he didn't tell me anything but I can feel it can't you feel it the, the piece of rope shortening beneath me still feels a, a long way off but I can feel it anyway promise is a promise don't know why I wanted to know this, but I'm here now. Let's go back. And he sort of heads down, but instead you just go behind the alley of the tavern. He says, so Black Donald, you wanted to know how to what, trick him? Yes, uh, ah. we told you we need something that our friend lost. You realize yes, that this is basically like the devil, right? What? Um, I suppose so. Um, but how do we trick him? That's the important thing. Well, it's said. Uh, he's good at all jobs. Everything. Banker, teller, biker. Dog walker. You just said biker twice. No, banker. Like money. And then biker. Like poise. But Bi not biker like a bicycle. Right. Is but he he's good, not at good at that? one job, see? The devil can't do tailoring. Whoa. All right. Is that how we trick him? Well, I don't know. Like I said, it's a bit of information. If you can figure out a way to trick him from that. All I know is, not many people know it, but he can do everything. Anytime someone tries to wager with him, gambling, uh, racing, whatever, they lose because he's the best. But he can't tailor for shite. So if you wager with him something to do with tailoring, then you're not half bad. You're going to win. I see. Uh -huh. All right. Well, actually, that that is that is quite helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I, listen, I feel like that's very helpful information. Finding Black Donald is difficult. He can take any farm, but the feet, you see, the feet will give it away. The cloven feet. He can't be shot, no matter what he appears as. He's always going to have those hooves. I look down at his feet casually, just. I don't have fucking hooves. I told you I'm Finn. I don't know. I, I just I, I don't know how common this affliction, a, com, a, a, a condition is. Um, a lot of people have hooves, but if they right. are trying to trick you and put a wager on you, then don't fucking deal with them. A bad, Black Donald's right. not a bad guy unless you try to make a wager with him. Other than that, he's just trying to get by. Didn't he's, wrinkles right. have hooves? What? Wrinkles did, but it's a very common condition, though, apparently. A lot of people I think have it's hooves. like a species. Well, yeah, like, like satyrs. Or, so that's um, not not a very good 
sign, is it? All I'm saying is, if you're looking wow. for Black Donald, and if he's trying to trick you for whatever reason, look for the hooves. All right. Good luck. Well, thank you, Finn. Um, what are you going to do now that you know when your life is going to end? Oh, probably get drunk. See you later. Oh. He turns away and walks to the oh. wall. Poor man. <laughs> that's that's fun. That's fun. And now he knows. And it is going to get drunk. Wonderful. Shall we? Are you any good at tailoring? Um, yes, I actually um, was um, sewing champion at, um, um, sewing at my champion. school. Well, yes, actually, because uh, it turns out that uh, learning to become a doctor, you need lots of practice um, uh, sewing stitches uh, back together. <gasps> and perfect practice is, um, well, Tailoring, so that's excellent. It turns out, uh, thank you, thank you. Yes, um, it's not a skill that I get to use so much these days because most of the tailoring goes to well, um, Doctor Liston. Um, but um, yes, but you definitely would indeed. have experience through oh, suit. In fact, I, I tailored I tailored this bow tie. This, this is oh, it yes, qu- quite nice. Yes, well done. I have another one here. I have another one here. Uh, I, I like that one though. So here, I'll give you uh, this one uh, if you want. Well, it. thank you. Um, I just keep them around just in case. All right. So we need to find him now. What do you think is the best way to find the devil? Doctor Liston said that we couldn't miss him. That he has great big plume of hair atop his head, black fur, tusks like a boar. And that he's no, a that shop. That might have just been. That might have just been the, the form that he took. When he did the wager with him, perhaps we should go into anybody, the right? the center of the alleyway and shout, "We have a wager!" Oh, I actually don't think that's half bad. I, I think that's a pretty good idea. Let's do it. What, what have we got to lose? I mean, we've we've only our lives what? and all our possessions and memories. Well, I'm ninety percent sure I'm dreaming right now, so I'm not particularly worried about that All and I might right. still be a little drunk did you so. want me to find the blue woman again oh gods no please do not find that hag she was hideous and she scratched me while she slapped me very <laughs> not nice please uh, let's just go to the center of town just like you say and say hey and then it cuts to us in the center of town yeah hey we have a wager and as Everyone? all the things are like moving around you, you see this like dog-sized black cat, which is almost completely black except for a white spot on its chest. You see this large brown creature. It's just like humanoid and but just covered in fur. You see like the 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 fountain in the center of this area, which is like gray green water, is like splashing and like comes to light, but everything sort of stops and looks towards you. And a small market stall that looks like it would serve fruit, except it's devoid of everything but fruit, is the only movement as you announce. Everything else stops. Even the water stops flowing. Mm. And you see someone bend out from under this stall and walk towards you. The first thing you hear are the cloven hoofs on the cobblestone beneath you. And following it up, you see this well-dressed man, his face is gaunt his teeth are longer than they should be and his eyes are almost completely black and his hair is slicked back tight and he smiles wide and long at you and says well then let's make a deal you must be black Wonderful. donald please not I'll, not that name just donald let's just go with donald about your day everyone I'll, and everyone's like, oh, and starts moving again. He's like, come here, step into my shop. And he walks into the small little room and down a set of soft steps that sort of give when you walk on them to like a carpeted area. It's sort of beautiful, um, like almost like a fortune teller's area. There's a small table in the center of this room that tends to go down. And as he steps down, he stops on the steps and turns around towards you and says, we are making a deal, right? A wager, you said? Indeed, uh, yes. Um, we do understand that you are in possession of, of, of something that um, 
we would like. No, 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 not the details turn. yet. I just want to make sure that you know the rules before we no, go down no, there. No, we don't. We don't really know the rules. No, nope. no, we do not. Oh, perfect. Let me tell you, the rules are as such. We make one bet. You get to pick to choose the terms. You get to decide what game we play, what challenge we do. But it's going to be you versus me. And that's one of you. You beat me, you get whatever you want. Whatever was set out in the beginning of our deal. But if I win, you get what I want. Whatever was set out in the terms of our deal. Beyond that, anything goes. How does that sound? That sounds fine. So you, um, we decide on the prize first, and then we decide on the challenge. After? What's the order? What, what's the pre precise order? The, um, first, uh, we go down there. And he, again, points to sort of the circle at the bottom of the stairs. And then we talk about what's at stake. And then we decide what kind of challenge we're going to face. And we do it. And then I collect. I always collect. What do you say? Do we have a deal? When you say you always collect, do you mean you've never lost? Not yet. And I've been around for a long, long time. So why do people keep coming here? <laughs> it's the human condition, sweetheart. They're stupid. Well. Well, that, those are, I do believe this is a form of trash talk. I take you on, sir. And your feet are silly. Let us do this. And he reaches his clawed hand out to shake yours. His nails seem longer than normal. His fingers longer than that. Shake on it. Gladly. I'm not afraid of you, dream monster. Let's do this. You should be. And he turns around and heads downstairs. And as you reach the bottom, you realize that there are hundreds of people sitting in what's sort of revealed to be stands like the shape of this building makes no sense as it stretches up and up and up and up and they all are now looking down towards the center area of what is being presented essentially and he turns and says, ladies and gentlemen fairies and fae my friends it's time for an entertaining night let us have a little bit of fun we have a new wager coming up. Someone else who wants what I have. And people are like cheering and booing, like laughing. So let's start off with what's at stake. And he turns to you. If you should win, what do you want, Duncan? We want what you took from Dr. Liston. Oh, Dr. Liston. I barely even remember him. He sort of searches his memory. Okay, okay. What did I take from him? It was a piece of his mind. Ah, that's right. Okay, deal. Now if I win, Duncan, he sort of looks at the crowd, is like, ooh. Let's say a mind for a mind. I'll take yours, but the whole thing. How much mind did he take of his? Just a piece. But them's ain't the rules. You name yours, I name mine. And everyone's like, whoop, 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 shh. And he's like, and now for the challenge. What challenge do you want to face me in? And he like reaches down and pulls out a violin case. Oh, um, tailoring. <laughs> what? Like to... Wait, so hold on, what's question? Oh, yes. Um, I, I fancy myself a, um, a bit of a tailor. No, no, no. So, no sorry, um, sorry, sorry, wait. You, t t like, like telling a story. Well, if it's telling a story... No, sir. Ready no, sir. Um, needle like, and gut. Through and through. Um, weaving, stitching. No, no. Do, um, do, 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 uh, hold on. Purling. Oh, like... Do you mean say, say, sailing? Maybe if you made a single glove. I think it's... Hold on. We, uh, no, 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 no. And, like, everyone's quiet now. Like, <laughs> You don't want to do something else. The people are here. They want something a little more fun. Maybe we should do something crazy. Like I think sewing is quite exciting. Yeah, well, you know, uh, anything else? Sailoring? 
sailing, you know? Oh, oh, I, I appreciate the offer, but no, actually, I much prefer to tear you into the ground and get that piece of Dr. Liston's mind back. Thank you. <laughs> well, fair enough. I mean, yeah, let's do it. Uh, bring out the tailing. And he, like, snaps his fingers. <laughs> and, like, a little guy comes out and, like, lifts the table. And he's like, can you, can you grab that side, please? Grab that side of the table, please. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yes, of grab, course. Thank you. Yep. And he, like, walks it out. And then there's, like, a few minutes. And he's, like, staying there. And he's like, why do you think a tailoring? That's crazy. Like, oh, here they come. And then they bring back in, like, a saw, sewing table and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's it's a tail tail off tail off. Um um Rufus, whenever you think we're ready, you just stay go and we'll start. Rufus is like, um go and he's like okay. And uh, before you is like a piece of fabric, and uh, you see yes. Black Donald start like sewing frantically. And I slowly remove uh, my, my spectacles from my front pocket. I place some of my face delicately, and then from my other front pocket, inside the um, front of my jacket, I pull out a small sewing kit, needle and gut, um, standard issue, um, very basic stuff, but it'll do the job. And I thread the needle, and I pull the knot taut, and I begin to sew. And... Yeah, you begin to sew. Give me a give me a flip. Roll for sewing. Doing. doing. Feels like a doing very yep. much. First flip is a is a is a tails. Is that a failure? F tails fails. Tails fails. Tails yeah, fails. and you see the devil like a quarter done. He's like, maybe I'll win this one after all. And he keeps sewing. Oh yeah, the second one's also a fail. <gasps> yeah, and he's like half done as you're still trying to clamber around behind him. Your cockiness <laughs> going against you. All right. Well, um, uh, nurse. Uh, yes. Uh, assistance, please. Uh, is that strictly allowed? No, no. It wasn't included in the rules. No. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, you didn't explain that as a rule that someone couldn't help you. So he's like, "Fair enough," but then I get help too. Fine then. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, Zia's getting you XP to do the thing. Oh, to me. She's saying, "Do the thing, uh, Robert Liston." I wonder if she's giving XP for the devil to complete it. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh. no! Because that'd be pretty funny. Um, I'm going to take that as a yes. But anyway, uh, you get another flip. All right, one more flip. I don't should, know. Actually, should I roll for helping? I'm going to see what... Well, first I'm going to see what Zia says, if it's actually for me. Yeah, we have to wait for the lag. Oh, no, for Duncan. for Duncan. Okay, fine. Uh, so okay. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to let you flip one more time. Or you can do an auto success if you want. That's another Tails. <laughs> oh my God. So now you have XP. XP is auto success if you'd like to use it. Or you can flip one more time. How lucky do you feel? I'll do an auto success. Actually, no, I'll flip again. <gasps> Four times in a row. One more oh, flip. Else. Here we go. This one's for all. Mind you, I was thinking, I was thinking that that was, the, um, that was the, the, the XP that I just used. So why don't, Ursula, why don't you flip? All right, I will. Helping? 50-50 chance, y'all. Baby, you need to flip. <laughs> you <laughs> <don't ever go. laughs> That's a fail. Ah! And the devil finishes his glove. And he's oh, like, no. Well, I'm sorry to say that the record still stays and he snaps his fingers and you feel something drain 
from you uh, and two two people kind of come up behind you and like lean you back down <gasps> and uh, Ursula you see this as the crowd goes wild Shh. I have a wager oh well sounds like tonight got Double interesting, and the crowd starts clapping again. Same wager, Liston's mind, and Mr. Duncan's mind. Oh, well, interesting. That's a pretty hefty wager. I'll take it for your life and. His life. She spits in the palm of her hand and shakes. <laughs> Fair enough. The wager has been accepted. Again, uproarious laugh and applause. And what's the challenge, dear? We're sewing again. <laughs> and he holds up like a weird glove. He's like, Fair enough. <laughs> reset the table. And everything sort of gets reset. Duncan's like <laughs> lying on the ground uh, next to you. And the devil stands up and says, The game is set and matched. Rufus, when you're ready. Rufus is like, uh, okay, go. And immediately the devil starts. Uh, you also have some XP this time. Colin gave me some XP. Ursula gets my XP. Do I still have XP? If so, I give it to Ursula. <laughs> okay, so I got three XP. Unfortunately, I, I, I don't have any skill for doing. So I'm going to roll four dice. One for my roll. This is just for your first one? You're going to use all three in one? What do you mean? My, just There's four one. rolls to complete the sewing. Are you kidding me, right? Well, that's what he did. Okay. No, I'm going to use... This will be my first one right now. Okay. I'm just... I'm not using any XP just right now. Twenty. Twenty. Success. Yeah, success. So yeah, you get it like over, and the and the devil's like still caught in the first one. He's like, oh, hold on, just just give me, a, just just wait. I'm looking over at him, sewing a little faster. My stitches are getting messy, but I'm completing it. Give me another flip. Okay. So that was just straight up and down. Do you want to use XP to auto succeed? Uh, XP is auto success, not a flip. Oh, then I can auto succeed the rest of the thing. If you're using all three XP. I'm going to yes. use an auto success on this one. Okay. So that's my second one. Okay. So that's my first success. <laughs> just wait. Just fucking wait. He says. It's actually quite easy once you get the hang of it. You're on your third roll. And I'm going to flip this one. Can I flip and then if I fail, I can choose to auto succeed? No. Oh. But I don't have to succeed all four of them. Who says? Oh. Okay, I'll auto succeed on this one. You sure? What do you mean? Are you sure? Okay, you ought to succeed. <laughs> Just fucking run. And uh, yeah, you're like at the last quarter of your glove, and he's still at like the first quarter. Okay, now I want to flip for the final one. Okay. Ready, everyone? I fail. No. Oh. But that doesn't mean he wins automatically. No, but now he's it. up to his like second. Oh, okay, I'm catching up on you. I, my my string is knotted, and yeah. I'm trying to unknot the string, but it's it's getting caught, and there's there's a s snarl of thread. Oh, oh no! I'm gonna flip again. Oh. That's a success. And you finish the last bit I mean, of it as the devil uh, is only half done. And he's like, no, no. <sighs> and everyone's kind of like a bit flabbergasted. And they're like, but Black Donald, you I, never lose. She slams down the glove. Eat that, Black Donald. <sighs> Fine. Your friend's mind is back. And Duncan, you still feel oh. fucked up. No, you still feel like messed up. He's like, it'll come oh. back slowly. It'll come back slowly. And the back of your head really hurts. And, uh, and he's like, he's fine. Help him up. And the guys like help you up. 
and uh, the oh, room is like starting oh, to shrink a little bit and come back to regular size. And uh, he's like, and uh, listen, yeah, here, give him this. And he reaches into a pocket and, and hands you a uh, dice. Chunk of brain. That was a good die. He's like, give that back to him. That'll, his brain will be fine. Thank you. Well played. Yeah, well, well played for you too. And don't come back. Let's go, Duncan. She puts his arm over her shoulders and we start heading back out towards where we know the door is. And as you're heading towards the door and leaving it, it's seeming smaller and smaller behind you. You exit to the narrow and it's sort of getting, it's like fading a little bit. You walk down the alleyway that you came from and as you do, you can see it sort of the end of it turning back to regular street. And as you exit towards the main streets, you walk and walk, and eventually you're back in Edinburgh. It sort of like fades out, like waking from a dream. Before you realize it, you're you're standing in sort of a park. Are you all right? Oh, oh my head is swimming. Uh, not in a good way. Um... But yeah, I think I'm I'm fine. What happened? Last thing I remember was losing, and then I thought that was it. I I wagered again, and I beat oh. him. You beat so, Black Donald. Yes. Oh, I, Ursula! Thank you, thank you. Oh, and you're I welcome. I wrap my arms around you, give you a big hug. Oh. oh it, it, you didn't just wager for my life, right? You, you, you got his mind back, yes? Yes, with this. We just have to give him oh. this dice. Brilliant. Let's do it. Let's go back. Oh, he's going to be so pleased. Is it like super late at night or like no time has passed at all? Or It's pretty late at night, like super late at night, like almost morning. We go over. We, we walk over to his house. And, uh, you know, he comes to the door looking really ragged and he's like... Fuck, you're back, did you? Did you find my mind? She holds up the dice. Oh, thank you. And as you're handing it to him, it's like sort of a dice, but now back in the real world, it looks a bit different. It almost looks like just like a, almost like a sugar cube type thing. And he's like, thank you. I, 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 can't, I don't know how to thank you. And he puts it in his mouth and he's like, I, I can feel it. I'm whole again. I feel like myself for the first time in five years. Duncan, Ursula. I can never repay you. Just promise us that from now on you'll try your best not to have any more inquiries into this kind of thing. I'd really not like to go back there. Mm, me neither. Uh, Tomorrow, but also you could. As a thank you, I want both back. of you in the operating room with me to show him, uh, Ger uh, to show Grinterby, Grinterby exactly how much trust you put in me and how much you saved me. Good night. It would be my honour. Good night. Shuts the door, and the two of you head home. The next morning. You arrive at the hospital. Used to be better at that. Well, the next morning, you arrive at the hospital with a spring in your step. You feel the night's magic beginning to wear, but your mind still turns and wonders what exactly you did. Robert is already in the operating room ready for the early morning and you both have come in early enough to join him as you enter you see the nervous faces standing in the crowd all sort of excited for liston's return after the terrible tragedy of yesterday he stands confident and nods solemnly to the two of you as you head down grinter b is standing there sort of 
understanding and accepting of your reinstatement of him. And Cumberland sits next to him, hesitant, but nods as well, almost almost with a bit of almost with a bit of acceptance. Begrudging acceptance. The two of you enter down next to Liston, who addresses the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday was a difficult day for all of us. Many years I've been working in this hospital. I'm not ashamed to say that I lost my way. But these two friends, they helped me get it back. Thank you. Looks to both of you and nods. Please, let us make this worthwhile. And he sort of gestures for you, Ursula, to stand across from him, and he gestures for you, Duncan, to stand next to him. And he turns to the crowd with the blade drawn and says, Ladies and gentlemen, I will now perform the quickest amputation in the history of medicine. And with that, he spends two and a half minutes cutting off the leg of the person at the table. In doing so, chops your entire left hand fingers off, Ursula, and slices you across the belly, Duncan. Shortly after, you die of fright, and Ursula, you die of gangrene in the hospital over the forecoming months. The patient dies almost instantly. But Robert Liston exits the theater confident, dealing with the first ever recorded 300% mortality rate. The end. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Wow. <laughs> and that really happened. I it mean, did. not all of everything. I mean, the sewing competition definitely yeah. happened. Yep. Yep, it did. Yeah. Well, all of that was LSD. So the the drink he gave you at the beginning basically tripped you out. The way nice. it works is he goes he brings you to the basement, fucking knocks you out, <laughs> drags you somewhere else, and you basically score LSD from his dealer or heroin from his dealer and you bring it back to him. I mean, it's like a twisted Alice in Wonderland. People, doctors used to be all messed up on all kinds of drugs back in the day. <laughs> I know, but this is the first time that both of you've experienced it. <laughs> I love the idea that you go back and like experience every scene and be like, "Oh, wait a minute!" Like, because even the fucking way that the waiter, where you're like, "His legs," he's like, oh, and like walks out as if it's happened like a hundred times. Where Liston's like, "He's a fucking animal now," and you're like, "All right, what the fuck yeah. are you talking about?" That's awesome. And like this, like. The people that like her interact, it's like, oh, just a fucking crazy LSD fantasy. And like, he brings you to his basement, draws the door, and then fucking knocks you both out and drags you out of there. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was a weird one. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, I'm just looking back through the chat. And I know someone was saying, no, don't drink the thing. Don't drink the yeah. thing. And I wanted to find out who yeah. that was. They should win. Because it was totally just fucking drugged. That's why the minute you got in the room, you started like feeling warm and like the pictures were moving. Because like you're just fucking <laughs> like high. <laughs> and like I figured the dude's carrying a picture that sort of plays a trick on your mind at first. So then you like naturally are like, oh, it's the fucking goat man. <laughs> so funny. But he never says it either. He never says what you see. He's just like, he's one of them. And you're like, ah. <laughs> No, you know what? No one said don't drink the thing. People were just excited I'm sure that someone did. It's at like nine thirty ish. Nine twenty four. Oh, um yeah. I don't see any don't drink the thing, guys. Well, I don't know. Kind Let's just so many good chats you guys were killing it in the chat all night long yeah you did really good tonight let's just do let's do shmini 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 shmo shmini 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 shmo let's do Bubba Jethro Caleb I don't think he's one yet and he was pretty active Caleb. tonight the other Caleb, Caleb? the other there's other two, Caleb there's two Calebs there's Caleb and there's Bubba Jethro in brackets Caleb uh, let's give it to Bubba what's Jethro what's this Caleb's last name I don't know but let's give it to you, Baba Jethro. Well done. You were fun and engaged. Uh, congrats. Yay. Ladies and gentlemen, this was Robert Liston's 300% mortality rate. Uh, this has been a long time on my like wish list of games, so I'm really glad we got to do it. And you guys did such a fantastic job. Thank well done. you. Very funny. That was a fun Thank game. You. Yeah, it was. Um, oh, yeah, we're going to be back next week for Apocalypse World Part 2. So uh, make sure you come by for that. 
That is it from us. Hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend. And as my friend Justin always likes to say, Jolly good. Jolly good, guys. Good night.